All right. Let's see if this works. Hey, Hernan, how's the audio quality? Is it uh, somewhat doable? Okay, great. Okay, I'm also going to join this Hangout because we have this projects party thing going on with, with uh, Jen and Drew. But I... No idea if uh, if this Twitch stuff is going to work work together with uh, uh, Hangouts at all. Self the Hangout link. And open it here. Hey Drew, just trying to uh, figure out how to get into the Hangout. Just like C++ with all his favorite parts <laughs> as part of the like the actual library. Oh hey guys, I'm getting so much echo. Hey JP. Uh -oh. Wait, can can you hear me from the hangout? Can Ryan hear me? We probably have to. Well, you're Ryan. muted in hangouts. We probably. Uh... I probably have to tell Ryan that he's on the Twitch stream right now. Testing, testing. Yeah, I can hear you all right. Uh, maybe it just doesn't work with like multiple. Okay, when when I unmute you on Twitch, I get a lot of echo. Oh, uh, shit. With like an eight second delay, it's really weird. Uh, I don't know if we can get this to work then. Um, let's have a look. JP, do you want to unmute yourself on Hangouts, maybe? Is that the right way to go? Well, that doesn't really work because it hey. doesn't let me. Uh, I think this uh, Twitch streaming thing doesn't work well together with, uh, with Hangouts. I think it hogs the microphone and so on. Uh, and then it's kind of weird though, right? Like why can't you use it in two applications at the same time? Okay, let's just... Maybe Ryan can just also watch you on Twitch. I guess so. <laughs> I don't actually have the, the Twitch link. Is it posted somewhere? Um, yeah, Drew can share it, I guess. Let me just restart my browser and see if that helps. And otherwise we'll just do something like that.
cool. JP plays with Jai. All right, yeah. It looks like my uh, my Hangouts isn't, isn't oh, wow. too happy. Um, but do you guys get like a, a big feedback loop if you say something? Yeah, that's really weird. Like I hear myself on like a one second lag. Oh, that is okay. That is super weird. Um, now I also hear you on a one second lag. You know what? I just I'll just start start it on a different computer. I have a different computer here. So I'll just turn the Hangout on my laptop. That should work. All right. Like that. Now it's a bit weird because I'm wearing headphones, but whatever. Okay. Um, and then people, I guess, can hear you through like the microphone. That should be all right. <laughs> All right, how's this working? I think okay. But I guess you will still hear yourself. I am getting some echo of my own. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know if there's much that we can do about that, um, unless I somehow plug you. You know what? I'll just plug my headphones into this, and then it should. Oh no! But then people can't hear you. Ah, this is okay. This is yeah. terrible. Okay, this doesn't work at all. Uh, all right. Oh. <laughs> I, I think you just need to mute yourself. Um, here I am muted on the hangout. Right, no, but that, that's the thing. Or you just mute, mute the, yeah, I think this is it. You should mute oh, Twitch, right. and I unmute myself on the Hangout, and then it should work. Okay, so just mute my Twi uh, your, mute the Twitch window, and then it should be good. All right, testing, testing. Yeah, this should be good, right? Yep, no echo. Hooray! Okay. Wait, I did hear the echo. Well, you you also have to you have to mute the Twitch stream. You have to mute the Twitch stream. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay, I guess we can get started. Uh, yeah. Let me actually first install some Jai um, uh, yeah Jai tool syntax highlighting because otherwise we can't really see anything because I just got this Sublime Text instance set up here, so. My plan for today is to uh, s implement the game of Minesweeper and just see how far how far we can get with that. Classic. 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 Question. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we can just start with sort of like the. Oh wait, let's do a directory. Um, we can just start with the board generation, which is the classic interview question, and then maybe see if we can write some unit tests for it or something, see how testing is done in Jai, and then maybe write some UI for it. Uh, I guess I call it main.jai, I don't know what the convention is. Okay, let's see if we can, I think this is the syntax. Um, let's see, well, what is, I think something like this should work. See if we can at least get this running. All right, so this, and I guess we can do. Ah, it's Windows. So I have to do backslash uh, slash bin slash jai dot x. Um, ah, I guess I have to import printf or something. From somewhere. Well, let's look at the how to of the first. Ah, basic. Okay, we can do an import and then is it printf? No, just print. Okay, great. Oops. Uh, man, I haven't programmed on a Windows computer for like at least a decade. <laughs> yes, yeah, amazing. Okay. Oh, uh, Hernan is asking if I can in, uh, increase the font size a little bit, which I can. Okay, there we go. 
Wait, so did that work? Okay, it compiled at least. How fast did it compile? It took a whole second! I thought this was uh, supposed to be a fast language. Alright, uh, well, what do we have now? Um, there's only main.gi. Does it say where it... Oh, failure to find... Oh, sh shit. I forgot about that. Okay, I think uh -huh. we... We will have to spend a little bit of time doing that. It wasn't too bad last time, uh, but it does take a little bit of time. Okay, I have to do this read this thing and install Visual Studio. But I guess we can sort of like get started writing a program while we while we wait for that. Yeah. Well, How did you get access to Jai? Uh, I asked John. Yeah. Um, did you have an existing relationship, or did you just uh, email some email address you, you found? I emailed, yeah, the email address that I found. Uh, I told them that I would be interested to work on something like Jai uh, when I wasn't very happy at my job at Cruise, um, and he told me. Well, he didn't tell me anything, but then he, I just suddenly got this invite. Uh, I think I have to install this. Um, oh man, four, giga, four gigabytes for just this stuff. Okay, well, this might take a while then. Well, no, I'm on a fast connection now. It should be okay. Um, <laughs> so but, there, there, there was no actual communication, just like a link? Um, well, there's now a Discord uh, thing. In fact, I should probably join the Discord uh, thingy. and see, uh, see if people say anything interesting there. Uh, maybe I'll do that later. It doesn't matter for this demo anyway. OK. Uh, cool. Oh, people are saying that this. Uh, the Visual Studio installer is killing the stream. Oh well. Oh well, something is actually yes. <laughs> um, I guess we. Okay, maybe in that case I'll just wait because this seems to be going pretty fast. Uh, so we're almost. Yeah, this will take like a, a minute or something. I think we can wait a minute. Uh, someone is asking if I'm planning to use this for game programming, and the answer is no. But yes, today I guess because uh, I guess the test because we're going to build Minesweeper in it. But I have no background in game in game programming whatsoever, so probably the the where, game where part. Where are people asking you these things? I don't. Oh, on the Twitch. I don't see it in Twitch chat. Oh, there's there's a Twitch chat. You're not seeing stuff there? Wait, I don't, I don't see it. I think maybe you have to log in to Twitch or something in order to see the Twitch chat, is that right? Yeah, I'm logged in. Huh. I can type stuff into Twitch chat, do you see that? Yeah. Wait, do I have to configure something uh, in the Twitch chat to make it sort of public for everyone? Is this a thing? This is my first... I can see someone said HH says... Uh, that's the username. That's you? No, no, no. that is uh, Hernan. Okay, now I can see someone else. Right there, Rex. Oh yeah, they're, they're wondering where the voices are coming from, and I will have to explain that this is Jens and uh, Drew's bi-weekly <laughs> project party. And Drew yes. and Ryan are on a, a call on a different computer that I have next to my, next to my screen. That was the best way we could figure out how to do this. Okay. I think the stream should be good now because it looks like it's done downloading. So it's just installing stuff. Um, so I guess we can, like, is the, is the stream good for you now, Drew? Yep. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's try that then. So, okay. So what do we do? Need to do for for Minesweeper? Let's start with the very basics. Let's uh, generate uh, the locations uh, of the bombs. 
So I guess we can start with, um, uh, well, that's a good question actually, because I kind of want, want to do it with, uh, with coordinates, right? I want to get, have sort of like a struct that is like um, uh, a location. And I guess I can do something like x int and y int. Is this the syntax? Maybe. Um, if I do this and then I print it in here, will we get something? And this is like the, the very beginnings of learning a, whoops, of learning a new programming language. Oh wait, the problem is we haven't even been able to, to run it yet. Oh yeah, well, that, that's right. Uh, okay, so we'll have, to, we'll have to wait for that. Okay, so I think that this should work. Um, oh, someone asked if, v, uh, if the VS build tools are required and uh, on Windows they are. And I think, on, uh, I think the, the beta supports uh, Windows and Linux. Um, and in Linux, uh, I think you don't need them. Um, I think it's basically, sure <laughs> yeah, I think it's basically because of, um, I don't know, linkers or stuff like that. I think it's the linker. Um, okay. So I guess what we will have is we will have an array of locations, uh, that we call, um, I guess, uh, empty locations and that should be a declaration and then what we want to do is we want to uh, get a bunch of uh, bomb locations uh, let's shorten this a little bit um, and we are going to do that by randomly picking items from the empty locations but I guess I don't know how to do randomness yet <laughs> Okay, I guess we just, could just, just start. Just do an unshuffled array. Um, Implement shuffle later. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I guess what we can do is is like uh, we can do something like uh, fake random numbers. Uh, it's like an array of ids. And I don't. Well, okay. I don't even know how this works. But let's let's do something like this, right? Um, we only need a few a few numbers. Uh, okay. Um, all right, well, I guess we also need the input to our program. So we have like uh, the width, which is an int, and let's say it's like a six, the height, it's an int, which is, I guess we don't even need this. We can do it like this, right? Yeah. And then the number of bombs, let's start with two. Okay, great. So I guess the first thing we'll need to do is uh, populate the empty locations. So how does a for loop work? I'm sure that there's an example with a for loop somewhere. Uh, uh, okay, this is where you loop over some arguments. How do we do a ranged for loop? For array. Oh wait, this is also interesting. There's a seed here that might be useful later because this thing probably has some randomness. Okay, oh look at this. This is exactly what we want. Okay, let's copy this. Um, okay, so it looks like it's inclusive on both sides. So in our case, I guess we want to hide here. If we're, well, let's just call it row. Then we can just do rows minus one. We can have this column. Let's call this this row and column. That's like more and um, less uh, ambiguous. Uh, so here we have um, uh, columns. Uh, I guess this would be. That's uh, called calls. Okay. So then. Oops. Okay. Let's see how uh, Visual Studio is doing. Okay, that seems like that is done. Um, okay, I don't want to actually launch it, I guess. Woo. Windows. Okay, let's just comment this stuff out and just see if our print statement here works. So that is where we were at. Oh, I'll get rid of this as well. Uh, what? Oh, 
I see. Okay, sure, whatever. Print test. I do think we need the semicolon. Okay. Does this actually work? Okay, we have a main executable. Okay, that works. All right, that's a start. <laughs> now let's look at. Um, oh yeah, I think you have to declare it like any other thing. Uh, so we write it like that, I believe. That should hopefully compile. Oops. Yes. Okay, so now hopefully this works. Let's get rid of that. And then let's see, what do we get? Uh, okay, great. That seems to work. It even, even does like some, some pretty printing of structs. Amazing. Uh, that's very encouraging. Okay, now let's see if this is the right th way to declare an array of stuff. Okay, seems so. Good. Uh, so, well, first of all, we do know the size of this array, right? We, uh, we can say, well, let's just say rows times calls. Uh, and then I guess we need like a, 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 an index. this because I don't know if there's like an array push or something um, I mean yeah where would it get the information of uh, which index to push into so I guess we'll just try something like this um, and then how would we actually create this location do we have to I guess it should already be there because the memory is allocated for it. So we can say something like this, right? Does that make sense? I think so. I think this, this makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can, let's see if this does something useful. Oops. We really need an auto formatter for this thing. Uh, non constant expression in array declaration. Okay, so we can't do this, so I guess we can say size, and that's a constant, so I guess we can. Uh, wait, I'm not sure actually. Let's just do this first. Right, so that's not constant. I believe you can say you can indicate constants like that. Well, those things are not constants, so I guess we have to make them. Oh, and I made a typo there. Okay, <laughs> that's funky. Okay, and so we have an, uh, an array of locations. It doesn't automatically print any deeper than that. So I guess we can get rid of this stuff and try to actually, yeah, sure. Why don't we try this, this syntax? So we can do lock in empty locks and that should hopefully, let's do something like this. Oops. Oh. Oh, wait, sorry. Well, that did not work. Oh, I guess because. Wait, what did it think? It's just the last coordinates, which is correct. Um, oh, okay. Uh, this is not possible. I guess I have to do this. Is, what is the convention here? Something like this. Okay. All right. Okay. That is looking good. That is looking good so far. It's a little, it's a little explicit. But like, it's not super terse, so but that's all right. It's very clear what's going on, I think. But I think we're going to run into problems later with this, uh, this being um, 
this having to be a constant um, if we're going to pass in the number of rows or columns to some function. But we can deal with that later. I guess we can also have like a dynamically sized array. I guess the problem here is that it has to allocate it on the stack and it needs to know how much uh, space to allocate on the stack. But if we do a dynamically sized array, it uh, will allocate it on the heap, I guess. Yeah. OK, so that's a good start. Let's save this little piece of code. So now we want to pluck out uh, the actual locations. And in this case, we also know the size of this, at least for now. Um, and so I guess what we can do is we can do something similar uh, like this. And we have to get a random number. So, well, let's just say for now that we, you know what, let's actually see if, real quick if we can find how to do randomness because we found that other this file that had like a, a seed in there. Uh, uh, how do I go to the top of a file with a Windows keyboard? Okay, this has a seed. Where is the seed being used? There's this function called random seed, xx seed. What does, what does this even mean? Okay, I have no idea. Um, okay, I guess we can search for random. Oh, there's a random library, of course. That makes sense. Random.gi. Ooh. That's a bunch of stuff. Oh, great. Uh, so it keeps on some global state, I guess. So there's a state. Okay, the state is here. Uh, just starts with some random thing. But I guess we can just call this random get thing. Uh, does it have, oh, it even has a range function that's very helpful, but that uses floats. So we don't really want that. So I guess we can just use random get with a modulus, which uh, which is fine. Is there a uh, random shuffle? I think the shuffle is kind of convenient. Yeah, I don't see it here, but I don't know. It's also kind of fun not to rely too much on stuff and, and see see how it would shake out if we would do stuff ourselves. True. Um, okay, so let's try that. Uh, so I guess we import random, and we don't need this fake random number. So here we're going to get a random index, which we get from random get. I don't think it has any arguments, right? No. And then we do this modulo. Well, we need to know how many empty locks there still are. Um, I guess we could use empty locks index for that. <laughs> Is that too gross? I think it's all right. Um, right, because at the end of this, this should be the size equal to the size. Uh, I don't know, no, that's too gross, too gross. Uh, let's see. Just, just do a count every time. What's that? Just do it. Every time you're about to add a non-empty. Oh no! Wait, we have we have B. We have B. That is okay. So we can just do. Uh, I don't know. Uh, great. That's better. Uh, no duplication of stuff. Okay, so I guess we can find our location. And then I guess we can put that in our bomb locations. So this is already an interesting question. Can you just assign it like this? I would assume so, right? That seems logical. Um, okay. This is also going to uh, end up with less total bombs if you hit one you've already hit, right? No, no, no. We're going to remove. Uh, we're going to remove uh, uh, it by swapping it to the end. Okay. So, in fact, we're going to do that right now. So we know the last one. Uh, in fact, we only have to overwrite this this random index with. Uh, um, we don't even have to do a, a full swap because we're going to decrement uh, decrement anyway. So we just need to say here is empty locks, empty lock size. Uh, wait, did I make a, a typo somewhere? Okay, I don't know. Uh, minus one, and that is it. I think this this should be it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, cool. And now let's actually print the bomb locations. See if this works. Hi. Hello. Yeah. You're on a you're on a Twitch stream. Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> or at least your voice is. Okay. Oh wait, I have to declare this. Jiffy, should I post the, the Hangouts link to the Twitch chat? Yeah, sure. If people want to join, why not? I don't think that there's that many people watching anyway. It's like, I don't know, like six it's people. Seven. Seven. Yeah, why not? We can all join in, in, the, uh, in the fun. Um, okay, where was I? Oh, yeah. Let's try this again. Oh. Right, you have to declare all these things. This is a new variable, so a new declaration. Uh, okay, that runs. Cool, all right, we're getting some bombs. Okay, they're the same bombs all the time, of course, because we didn't set a seed. So let's do that. Let's take the Wait, random he's seed. streaming himself, like, programming on, like, live, is that? Yeah. yeah. We're playing with Jai, so if you want to play with Jai, come watch the stream. Okay, okay. I need to do other stuff, but okay. thanks for letting me know. That sounds good, but I am going to be pretty, pretty chatty, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, okay, I guess I want to know what the current time is. How do we get time? Is there a time library? Time, okay, that's that's great. Uh, get current file time, no, that's a file. Uh, what's just the current time? This is all time stuff. Uh, get current file time. I'm presenting the current file name. I just want to make a call to time null, so I can put that into our seed. So otherwise, this is no fun. Oh, there's a function called get current file time. Is that different than no? Well, this gets a system time. That should be okay. What is this? What does this number give us? Let's see. Let's just print this number because I don't understand. Where do I read about Jai? What's that? Where do I read about Jai? You read about, um, well, there aren't too many resources out there because it's a private beta. Um, there's mostly videos on YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah, there's videos of like similar live streams, but from people who actually know what they're talking about. Um, for example, people who actually made the language <laughs> and some other people who have gotten the beta as well. Okay, let's see what this does. This is a number. It's a number that changes. Okay, so I don't know what the file part in this file time means, but maybe that's some thing that I don't understand. Hey, Jacob. Hey, how's it going? You're on a, you're on a Twitch uh, stream, just so you know. Being streamed to uh, to people who are interested in Jai. Oh. There are yes. there are the whole nine of us. <laughs> oh, Lewis is also. Hey, Lewis. Yeah, I'll be around in thirty minutes. Uh, we'll be we'll keep going for a few hours, I think. Uh, see how far we get uh, building this. Okay, so this is great. Uh, we can plug this into our random seed. Pretty much directly, I think, to both you, uh, U32s. So let's just do that, I guess, uh, here before we use the randomness. Where do I go to watch the stream? Um, there's, a, there's a link in the Hangouts chat. Ah. I can't see historical messages. That was sad. Uh, could you maybe, yeah. Thank you, I think, oh yeah. Sweet. 
<laughs> it's very funny how there's sort of like the two channels and people can go f from the one to the other or from the other to the one. Uh, yes. <laughs> but we'll, there's like an eventual consistency, I guess. Okay. There's bi-directional confusion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is exactly what the eventual consistency means, right? Bi-directional confusion. Uh, oh, this is a U64, so that's all right. Uh, can we just um, modulo it or something? I don't know. It doesn't even matter too much what we modulo it to. I'll just use some number here. If the bits inside are randomly distributed, you can just it too. Yeah, that's true. So we're implementing Minesweeper, I take it? Yeah, exactly. Such a good guess. Um, and I guess I'll... Oh, how does casting work? God, I don't know. Because we kind of know that this this will be uh, good enough for uh, UN32. Um, cost. Okay, it's cost. And then the type. And Okay, so that's pretty similar to C. So I guess we can do cost two. I don't know how it's, how it associates, but it does, doesn't matter actually how it associates here, right? Oh, wanted S thirty two. Okay, well that's fine too. That's fine too. Okay. Panic. Oh no, number must be in that range. Wait, what? Do I need to do this? Probably maybe? didn't mod by a high enough. Or by a low enough, low enough number. number. Well, this number is pretty low, but okay, let's just do a thousand. That's definitely low enough. Okay, or yeah, maybe you're right. What's that? Or it was negative. Right. Um, okay, this is this gives us. Well, it doesn't give us quite good enough because now we get. Uh, I think maybe. Okay, let's just add some more numbers. <laughs> Now I feel like I'm just trying stuff, which is not good. Uh, gosh, okay, let's print out this thing again. Okay, so the last, <laughs> literally the last like uh, four digits are just always the same. So this is not going to do anything. <laughs> Um, amazing. So let me just do something like this. Is this going to be good enough? I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Ah, oh, panics again. Okay, all right. So I do this, and then and then I modulo it. What else? Just stay with zero. It'll be deterministic too. Actually, let's do it to to this amount because I think this is uh, that changed quite rapidly. Wait, why is that such a big number? Do I have to also wrap this again? Why do we get such big, big numbers? Or am I just acting stupid here? Actually, let me do this. Can I do this in the Windows thing? Is it is allowed? Yeah, I guess so. Um, wait, what? Okay, I'm getting very confused now. Uh, why is it still saying that? I have all of this stuff commented out. This is, this is really commented out, right? Like, or is it still executing it for some reason? Line 25. Did you save? It's saying like, yeah, I'm, I'm saving. Okay, let me just delete that line. It's still complaining, what? <laughs> Did you recompile? Yeah, I have the thing in there. Is this not how it works? What was what'd you do? Can I see the... Can you see this? Do I have to zoom in a little bit? 
Oh no, the col the semicolon will mean it means it will run the second even if the first fails. Oh. Okay. okay. Does someone know how I can change change some commands in Windows? Is this not allowed? This is not a thing. No, it seems that it, like it run run both. Wait, if I try to introduce the bug again. Well, that clearly didn't. What? <laughs> okay, I guess I don't know how Windows works. If someone could tell me, that would be nice. But if not, I'll just do them one by one. Wait, and now is it, it's fine again? Okay. Well, I guess it is dependent on the time. So maybe the time, time has changed enough to do it right now that it... Okay, whatever. Uh, it works for now. If it starts crashing again in a second, we'll deal with it. Uh, we got random numbers. This is good. Okay. So I guess we'll just print out the board. Uh, well, we first need to construct, uh, cons yeah, construct a board. Ooh, so we have to deal with... Um... Oh, someone says uh, just use an ampersand. Oh, thanks, Ilya. Uh, let's try that. Okay, sure. I think the double ampersand also worked just now. Okay, I think it should both. Second command, even if the first one. Okay, great. Uh, well, that's not what I want. I want only this. Okay, let's just use this. Fine. Okay, we'll do a board. So I guess the question is, how do we do, uh, how do we do a race that are two dimensional? So I guess we first want the rows that should be our outer array, and then our inner array should be columns, and then let's use um, let's use ints. Is int a thing? Yeah, I think int is a thing. Or actually, I used that there. I think it's shorthand for one of the one of the other types. But it signal, signals that we don't care about really what it is. Well, in this case, we know it's going to be an extremely small number. So let's just use like uh, a say. will be signed because we really represent uh, mines with uh, minus one. Okay, let me first see if this compiles at all. Okay, it does. Uh, and I guess, whew, what did I do? I guess we don't even need the bomb location really. We're just going to use the board instead. And we'll just here do board lock of row of column equals minus one. And then we'll actually print out the board down here instead of the bomb locations. So I guess we do print. Uh, so we can do something like value is like port at row column value equals equals <laughs> that's the javascript talking there um we'll do a star and otherwise we print a value and then here we have to print a new line and hopefully all of this will work Semicolon. Oh. I guess this is not how ternaries work. Hmm. Does anyone know how ternaries work in Jai? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone seen enough videos to tell, to know how, is there like an inline if then or something? Maybe if I search for the word, word then. Well, I guess if statements. Okay, that, well, that's good to know. If statements work that way. So probably we can do that in line. Okay, well, this is not quite a ternary. Yeah, this is just kind of like that. If you grab for just question mark. Yeah, I did that earlier, but you get a lot of stuff. Have one um, space question mark space. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let me actually not search in bin. Uh, 
if I still did it, do I have to do it like this? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah wait, it does look. A hairy. Okay, so maybe I'm just not using it right. Maybe I have to do this. Maybe it doesn't associate that way. Maybe you have default. the operator precedence wrong. Uh, you need brackets. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Parenthesis expected. Although... Huh. Do you have an extra bracket? Yeah, I'm wondering. Let me just comment this line out and see if... Okay. So it is really that line. Uh, well, let's see. So here we have da 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 equals that. Question mark is white is black. Oh shit, I'm searching a C. <laughs> okay, let's search for Jai. <laughs> that is a classic mistake. Uh, but here, look at this. We are in Jai. In matrix.jai, but maybe this is some inline C? Yeah, this is a comment that has C in it. Okay. I don't think we have ternaries. Um, I don't think we have ternaries. Let maybe let's maybe look at because there's some person who made like uh, this thing called the Jai primer based based purely on videos. And let's see if there's a ternary. No. Okay. I mean, this is hopeless. Okay. No. All right, that's okay. We don't need ternaries. So all if statements. All if statements. So I guess we'll just do. So now at least we know this syntax. Oh, and I'll add a space after it as well. Fine, if you want it that way. All right, okay, so this works. We have some bombs. It should even work if we make the number of bombs equal to, uh, to 24, I guess, is the maximum here. Okay, great. Yeah, so I guess at this point we could we could start writing some, some test cases, but let's also fill in the numbers. It's just fun. Fun to do the numbers. So I guess we have our... Uh, a bomb and we just need to get like um, the surrounding number so we do um, well, that's actually kind of nice okay let's say we call this like um, neighbor r and we have to go from log r minus one dot dot log r plus one I think that should work neighbor column column minus one dot dot lock column plus one because those those ranges should be inclusive i believe but this is also funny it's it shows here that it, it might interpret this as a one dot like as a floating point number so actually let's compile this and see if it trips up on that or if it's okay no it's okay um unless there's some other behavior that we don't know about yet uh so now i guess we just need to check if uh, well, we could use like min and max here or something, but that's, that's kind of... Ooh, I don't, I don't know. Could you do something like this? Put the min and the max inside the four. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. But I, I kind of want to see if this syntax works. Uh, um, that would be pretty neat. Let's see if this compiles. Ah, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. This does work. Yeah, okay. That's all right. I'm going just going to stick with this. Uh, whoops. And then I guess the final check is we don't want to be uh, overwriting any existing bombs. Uh, so uh, minus one. So in that case, we will say because we know that it's all initialized with zeros, because I think Jai does that. I think you have too many knots there. Oh, or, oops. No, never mind. No, I think this is it. Ooh, did I do something wrong? Oh, yeah. 
Man, I'm failing on my own interview question. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Sweet. Okay. That's great. Okay, let's try it with a couple more bombs just to see. See it do something more interesting. Pretty good. Oh, someone is asking. Someone named Recursive Chat asks, is John on the line? John is not on the line, I don't think. Uh, well, certainly not in our Hangout, otherwise we would have noticed that. Um, the hang Hangouts link is above. If, any, if anyone wants to join the Hangout, just uh, join us. Join us in the, in the Hangout. The link is posted. I don't know, Drew, is it open to everyone? Uh, like, Or do you have to click uh, click yeah, accept or something? It's open to everyone because Ilya just joined. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so anyone who's, who's interested in uh, chatting with us, just uh, just join the Hangout. All right, see you, Hanan. Um, okay, now what I want to do is I want to uh, write a unit test. Because we have, we have a program of decent size. And um, before we continue, we need to make sure that, uh, that it actually keeps working, right? We don't want any regressions. So uh, let's see. Uh, I think what I've seen in other places is, oops, did I do something? Is that there's uh, um, underscore test seems to be a convention. But I don't know how to actually run those tests. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, I have also seen add test at the end of a function declaration. So here, for example, let's see, we have a radix sort function. And there's a function called radix test, and it ends with add test. And then there's the actual, oh, that's kind of nice. I guess we can just do the test function in line. Um, so let's maybe see how that is being done. Is radix test being called somewhere directly? Or is it using the magic of add test somewhere? You should just try putting in the add test function and then running it and seeing if it, uh, or doing a test command. I don't know if that's how you do it and seeing if it executes. Yeah, so I don't know how to execute it. So let's see if there's a test file. There's basic slash tests, but that just has tests in it. Okay, if anyone knows this that would be very useful um huh. i guess we could for now well let's actually just run the try compiler um without anything i don't think that it says anything about tests yeah you can just have some uh some code to run to set some global variables and stuff like that, but we can't really uh, we can't really tell it to just run the test. So there must be a test runner somewhere. <laughs> Surely there's a test runner somewhere. And otherwise, we can just do it manually, right? We can just call the, call our test function from from main. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of nice. Okay, where's this radix sort thing? Because maybe there's a place where. No, radix sort is only being used in the radix sort module. Okay, so I don't really know then. Uh, open question. This is a good question to ask, I guess. Um, well, let's see if this function has a main. It does not. Yeah, so there must be something special that can find all of these declarations and just run them all. Um, but it might be hard to find. Let's scan through it and see if we can see anything that has the word test in it. What is that? Is that the J source code? Um, well, this is not the compiler source code. These are like uh, libraries and modules that people have created so far. Oh, it's like the examples. Yeah, exactly. And in the bin, there's also not really anything there. Okay, that's all right. Um, well, it is interesting to look at the test because they use uh, asserts. So if you look at this, I've noticed that uh, there's like an assert function. So surely assert must be defined somewhere. Uh, okay, basic dot assert. Okay, that's useful. I think the stream died, by the way. What's that? I think the stream went offline. Oh, um, 
Is it working for, for you, Drew? Uh, no. Oh. I was hoping it was just me and it would come back eventually. But... Okay, let me just start streaming oh, okay. again. Is the stream back? It's even more gone now, actually. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, there, uh, let's come back. Ah, okay, it's back. Okay, fantastic. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, so basic has an assert function, so that's useful. So let's look at that. Uh, so we have basic.gi, and there should be an assert. Well, where's assert is being used here? Um, huh. Context stuff, system info stuff. Oh, interesting. It does calls assert, and there's like an assertion handler. Okay, so maybe assert. Well, wait, wait. Oh, oops, I'm not in the actual basic module. I'm in an example. Uh, okay, let's see. Basic. Oh man, there's a lot of different things here. How do we actually know? Uh, like, there's an example here that imports basic. What what gets imported if you import basic? Does it just import everything underneath? Um, that's possible. Or module.gi? I bet it imports module.gi. Well, well, normally it includes the extension. Is basic like a built-in library or something? Well, check, check this out. So module.gi loads, loads all the other things here. So I think, and there's a, a directory called basic. So I suspect that the convention is that mod, module.gi is sort of like the index file or something. I don't know. Um, there's an at temporary, once the test framework doesn't need us to, we won't load this automatically. Oh, interesting. This test.gi. So it looks like you might need to load tests.gi yourself. Uh, okay, that is interesting. Uh, All right, see ya. Um, interesting. Is he someone you know? What's that? Is he someone you know? Ilya? Yeah, he works. Uh, he works with us. Cool. Um, okay, I guess it's just us now on the hangout, huh? Okay. Yeah, I don't see anyone else on the Twitch stream. <laughs> oh, is this Twitch stream dead? No, there should be a couple of people there. Wait, really? Oh, for some reason it shows no, not none for me. Ah, uh, well, maybe it's showing the wrong number. Oh, of now, yeah, now I see five for some reason. Uh, okay. System yeah. Okay. So, well, I'm actually interested. What is this thing? Simple string test. Okay, so these are actual tests. Okay, so this does not have anything to do with the test framework. That is too bad. Maybe the test framework is just not, not in here yet. I don't know. Uh, but where were we? So we have module.gi because I do want to insert. Okay, so here we have the insert function. Okay, so that is fun. Uh, it has some flags, I guess, that we don't want to profile or debug any asserts. That kind of makes sense. Um, and it gets inlined. And we get a bunch of extra information. Okay, so this seems straightforward enough. We just pass it with the thing and then a message. And then uh, I guess we have a variable number of any arguments that we can also log. And then of course, like, yeah, it uses the context to actually do the assertion so we can over override how we want to handle assertions if we, we are writing our own testing framework. Looks like it interprets your message as a format string. What's that? It, it, it looks like it interprets your message as a format yeah, string. Yeah, right, because it uh, passes it into tprint. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and tprint, that, that's fun, a funny thing, by the way, that uh, I think uh, um, prints it to the, uh, to the temporary buffer. So your program has a temporary buffer, which in our case doesn't matter because our program is very short, but we can clear the temporary buffer after each, um, uh, after each uh, frame that we render or something like that, because it's yeah. only, it should only be used for like ephemeral stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. So I guess we already are importing basic, so we can just use this uh, this thing. So let's write some tests for our thing. So I guess we will have. Well, let's first change this into a new function. So this is uh, like uh, uh, get minesweeper port, 
and we'll actually return the board at the end so we will have to return uh, okay I don't know let's just not specify it <laughs> let's return the board because we are dealing with these constant number of rows and calls which I guess we don't want to do eventually um, and then let's even see if this still works so let's call main get mine sweeper board okay Where's my console? Too many return values. Okay, so I do have to be explicit about this. Okay, so for now, I guess I can just pull this, these constants out. Eventually we want them as uh, arguments into the function. But I guess for now we will just uh, say something like this is rows calls uh, s8. Uh, okay, that should be of the right type. Procedure is missing its body. Oh god, how do you... Oh, I think it's an arrow. There's a double arrow. Yeah, I think it's a single arrow. Okay, so that still runs then. Um, cool. So I guess we can have a get minesweeper port tests. And eventually we want to do this thing. So what happens if I just put it there right now? It probably just won't do anything. Yeah. So, okay, great. So I guess we can call this. And for now, we'll just call our test in main. Since we don't know how the test framework works yet. And that should also still work. Okay. Um, so I guess one thing we can do now is just uh, put this in, in, a different, um, in a different function, right? We don't want to print every time we run this thing. So we can say print board and uh, board. I guess we still have to deal here uh, that it's always of that size, which we will have to fix very, very soon. Uh, okay. So at least now we won't get stuff getting printed. Uh, wait, how do arguments work? Oh, gosh, this is how it works. Okay, good. So I guess we have the problem now that we can't really do any assertions on this quite yet. Um, like we can count the number of bombs or something silly like that, but we really want to just do sort of like a deep comparison with a reference board. Uh, so I guess we just want to pass in the seed as a, um, a piece of, uh, what's that? Make a screenshot test. Yeah, exactly. We, we want to make it deterministic, right? So we can say we want to pass in a seed, which is an S32. So we want to optionally pass in a seed. How do we do optional <laughs> variables? Uh, in nah. uh... No, this is important. We're learning the language here. These details matter, uh, matter because otherwise, how are we ever going to learn them? That's the whole point. Um... Or you can use a default seed from zero. Yeah, but I it should be possible, right? Okay, let's look at that um, Jai primer thing. Uh, well, these are optional types. What does that mean? We don't know whether or not the pointer is null. Okay. Um, is that kind of what we want? Yeah, I guess I guess optional values only really make sense in the context of pointers anyway. Uh, That's so. totally not true. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Um, that because... said, it's possible. Well, well, these are default initializations. Could we? Okay. Well, this is an interesting question. Let's let's just try try something, right? So um, let's see. This is still compiling, I believe. Yeah. So what if we just add an argument now? Is it going to complain about that? 
So if we say seeds, it's uh, like a S32. Yes, because it is missing an argument. If I now, what if we do something like this, equals zero. Ah, okay, so that is allowed. So we can, I guess, do equals minus one. Uh, is this can a... you do equals get time or random get mod Right, we can do this whole thing. Uh, I guess we can have function. Can we do something like this where we get something from uh, from a function? Wait, can you put full expressions? Like, instead of having to write a function, I'm just curious. Yeah, let's see in a second. Uh, Non-imperative declarations can only be initialized to constant values. Aha. Uh -huh. um, okay, but I guess we could make this a constant value because we only care about it at the beginning of our program, maybe, I guess. Because it's like a, a global seed anyway. If you want to anyway. seed or if you want to reseed every time you make a board. Right. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter all that much, but that's at least an interesting observation. Well, I guess we could just um, we could just use minus one as sort of like. Uh, what what exactly does get current file time do? I don't know, but it gives us some number that seems to change over time. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's like the time the file was last saved or something. No, 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 because when I was running it earlier, it changed every time I ran it, even without recompiling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the file part is in that word, but okay. Uh, good enough, good enough. So here, I guess we can say random seed. Well, we don't know how to do ternaries. Ah. <laughs> What a drag. Okay, well, I guess we can do if seed uh, equals equals minus one, then seed is this. Great. And then we use it. Fantastic. That should still keep our current behavior. I guess in our main function, ah, whatever. Um, well, actually, we do want to print the board for a second just to make sure that we indeed get the same thing out of it every time. So let's first do it without a seed. Uh, and so it should be different every time, which it is. No, yeah, okay, it is. Um, but now I guess we'll do one, two, three. A nice seed, one of my favorites. Okay, so that's look good, looks good. So, I guess we now want to assert that it's equal to this thing. Because this is sort of our screenshot test, like this is, wait, how do I copy this? <laughs> how do I do this in Windows? Uh, it's hard to copy stuff from terminals in like all programs. Oh, this like is terrible. Why do? Try, I think. Oh, I copied it. I right clicking apparently copied it. Okay, the more you know. Uh, someone is asking on the chat, is Jai available to play with? Uh, and the answer is yes, but only to 17 people. Um, so send John an email if you want to play with it and see if he, um, if he gives it to you. Uh, let me get some water. Mm. And also for people who have joined the chat, feel free to join us on the Hangout. Where there's a Hangout link posted up there. I don't know if it's actually visible to earlier, to people who see it now, I'll just post it again. Okay. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, so I guess we have, whoops, I have to copy it again. Ooh. Okay, so I guess I want to, <laughs> I want to know how I turn this into sort of like a multi-line string literal thingy thingy. Uh, although I guess I could also just do some like magic and turn this into numbers. Shall I do that? Yeah, I guess I'll do that. So let's just do some editor magic instead. So we can split this into lines. Um, do something like this. And 
then we want these ones to become minus ones and then we want to say expected board is this Oops. I don't know if it's going to complain about that final trailing comma wait does it I don't know let's see uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, wait, I didn't expect it to choke on that. Why does it choke on that comma? Uh, it doesn't. It's a trailing comma thing. No, it's the first comma that it complains about. Oh. So that's kind of weird. Is it not inferring is it, is the it type? Is it like a Unicode comma or something because your edit, uh, the terminal is weird? No, I didn't copy the comma, I, uh, I typed it. But let's oh, maybe yeah. just do rows calls s8. See if it's... No, it's still unhappy about that. Okay, let me just comment this all out. <laughs> well, what? Ooh, did you crash the compiler? Yeah. Nice. Base threat in a thunk. Well, that is, uh, I guess I should at least. Amazing. I was wondering how long it would take. Before the compiler would crash? Yeah. Okay, let's see if this does something. No, 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 you should, you should um, save it and send it as a bug report. Yeah, yeah, I just want to figure out like where the bug is actually at. Okay, okay. what if we comment it all out? Okay, that still works. This, it's not happy about. What if I remove the type? What? I mean, we've done this before, right? Haven't we done this before? What if I do this somewhere else? What if you don't give it initializer? If I don't what? Give it an initializer. What, what do you mean by an initializer? Like you leave it uninitialized, you don't put a uh, oh, I see. square brackets. Um, well, but that's weird, right? If I just initialize an empty array like this? No, no, you, you still oh. have it if you just don't give it an, an initial value. Wait. Okay. I'm able to parse type instantiation. What? Okay, I'm very confused right now. If you, you're saying if I give it the type and not the initial value, like something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that works. But then if I, or do I have to do something like this? Is this the syntax? No. Wait, how do <laughs> how do I initialize a, a constant array? I mean, this seems like a fairly obvious choice, but maybe not. If you can't, you can't in C. They only added that in C++ recently. Oh, interesting. Wait, but in C++ you can do something like, 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 like this, right? In C++ you use curly braces. Uh, yeah. But they only added that recently, uh -huh. like within the past, uh, or in, in C++ uh, 17. Oh, um, amazing. Um, okay, so yeah, maybe this is just not a thing. Um, maybe I'm just too stuck in my JavaScript world. Yeah, uh, too stuck in having convenience. Yeah, I guess so. Ugh, well, how are we going to do this then? <laughs> what other, okay, let's just really okay. quickly look at some. Wait, 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 turn it into a string and assert the string equal. Yeah, I was thinking of doing that. I was thinking of doing that. Maybe that's the right thing to do anyway, because then we test print board at the same time, and that's kind of nice. Okay, all right. Let's do that. I'll just copy this thing again from, I guess we get it from here. So we'll do away with all of this. Uh, and I guess we just don't want print board to print out the standard output then. We just wanted to print. Um, we must do further decoupling. Always. 
always. So uh, there's this thing called a string builder. Can, can you not concat? Um, I guess I could. Uh, I don't know how concatenation works though. Okay, let's try concatenation. Uh, so we say string equals a. Okay, and then no, I don't think. Like, surely something like this shouldn't work. That would be really not not some something that he would put in this language. Um, let's search for concat. Okay, so there's a concatenate function. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, but I think that the string builder is actually quite easy to use. Oh yeah, string underscore builder. Okay, maybe it's not that crazy easy to use, but it's kind of a good a good thing to try because uh, we have to allocate something and then we have to free it. It's like there's all these things that we have to do. Uh, it's kind of a good test. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be too hard. Um, it's good to learn about this. Okay. So I guess we'll have a string underscore builder sb and then we call init string builder or is oh oh no I see okay and we pass that a pointer to string builder and this is the syntax for that I believe and then we later have to free the buffers uh, is that right? If there's some documentation for how this works. As of now, you have to call free buffers manually, but almost everyone calls builders to string. So how about if we make that free to buffers? Yeah, sure. But I guess we have to do it still ourselves. Okay, so I think we do it like this, and then we defer the free buffers, and I think this should work. But we have to import string builder, so let's first do that. Oops. Okie dokie. Now, let's see. Hey, Lewis. No, I, I did pay for Sublime. And I wanted to upgrade my license, but their license upgrade form is actually busted. I wanted to give them my money, but okay. I couldn't. I couldn't give them my money. <laughs> I sent them an email that it's busted, even, but they haven't followed up on that. So if they would know about my money, then what am I gonna do? <laughs> um, oh man, I'm. This is. I'm so so used to see. I guess. Okay, we have to write it like that. Okay. Uh, okay. How do I import string builder? Where just is to, it? Just to see. Well, <laughs> with this syntax at least. If I have to declare my types, um, yeah, or flow, I guess it's very similar there. It's probably flow. Um, okay. Wait. How? Where do we import? Oh, I guess we just import it from strings. No, from basic. <gasps> But I am. I'm already importing basic. And basic loads string builder. So wait, why? Wait, what was the error message again? Am I going too fast here? Import. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Just didn't need to do that. Great. Okay, so that did something. So now let's see how do we actually add a string to string buffer? Um, string builder, I mean. Is there sort of like a print f there's a write there's a consume there's an expand that's probably oh yeah that's just a, a local thing that's why they have the scope file directive um 
Right, but appendage is what we want, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So... And it looks like append is overloaded uh, with like different uh, different types. So that's fine. So I guess we can just do append here with the string builder and then here as well. So I wonder, is it overloaded to also take? No, it's... Ooh. Oh, what? I guess this is sort of a huh, compatibility thing or something. Okay, so I guess we just want here um, to use tprint. And then here we want to use append again. And then I guess at the end of all of this, we want to return the string. So, what happens with this? Like, how do we get a string? Okay, builder to string. As an allocator. Right, so we just throw this on the heap. So, whoever calls this, I guess, is responsible for freeing uh, this string again. What is the context thing? So, context is an implicit structs that gets passed into every function just like the this pointer in c++ uh, but here it's like not related to objects because there are no objects and it just gets passed around everywhere so it's useful if you want to set like an allocator for a bunch of code underneath including like library code and whatnot as well use your allocator or your like logging system or whatever uh, makes sense so let's see, so, okay. Um, okay, sure. So that seems like a fine convention. So we just return a string and whoever uses this has to clean it up. Uh, so we just return uh, string builder. Well, right, okay, so all of this stuff. Oh, interesting. Um, well, that's similar to what we did above, I guess. With a minus one. Oh, oh yeah, and here we declared it explicitly. Okay, good. Okay, okay. No surprises there. So, I guess now I can here say print, print board, and I guess we can rename print board to board to string. Especially if we follow their convention of builder to string. This seems pretty good. Okay, and so now there's a world of weird stuff. Oh, I have to pass in a pointer to a string builder. Okay, that's slightly better. Uh, is it slightly better? Oh, here also. My bad. Okay, it still prints the board using a string builder. Sweet. That's pretty good, but it's bad because we're not um, we're we're not freeing uh, freeing our, our string. Uh, Wait. So, so we have a bit of a memory leak here right now. Is that actually? Um, yeah, I think so. Right, because like this string gets allocated on the heap. Where do you allocate it? Uh, build it to string allocates it. It allocates it internally though, so it returns a like a, a holding pointer. Uh, yeah, so here it returns like, let's see, the result is a string and it allocates the memory for it here with an alloc call. Ah, uh, uh, so you have to free that, you have to have a matching free. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, let's do that actually, because I don't know exactly, can you just call free? Is that just bound properly? Probably. Okay. Um, so I guess we that can means say... you have to store your string somewhere, you can't put it in a temporary. Yeah, we'll do it like this. And then immediately after that, we can say defer free words through the data. So I think kind of like the thing, but that seems like awkward. Is there some more convenient way to, uh, uh, to free that string? I don't know. Garbage collection. 
<laughs> get an auto release tool and put it around it. <laughs> okay, so this seems to work. At least it doesn't crash or anything. Can I just omit the data and will is there a function that has been defined on strings themselves? Yeah, it seems so. Okay, that seems more that seems better. How um, do you know if it leaked? Is there any like leak detection? Um, I don't know. That seems hard to find out. Uh, leak. Yeah. Okay, but well here, there's a couple of places that have been sure. tagged with like, there's probably a leak here. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I guess one thing that we can try is not do the defer and see if it uh, prints garbage after we defer it. It probably will. Still yeah. If it's leaking, it's just printing leaked data. What's that? It'll probably, uh, oh, it did print garbage. Yeah, so that's good. Okay. So free actually does something. Fantastic. I wonder if they like intentionally overwrite all the data when you um, free or if that was a coincidence. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, is there such a thing as use after free bugs in Jai? Or right. is it going to like, right. is that always going to crash right. or print garbage? Yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, Okay, well, this is this is pretty good. Yeah, so I think another concept here is that with stuff like this, like what I could have done also is basically just set uh, set my uh, before calling any of this stuff, just setting my allocator uh, to just uh, uh, be an arena allocator at like a a small piece of memory, and then just sure. at the end of at the end of my my test or something, just freeing that entire. Uh, yeah. piece of memory then you don't have to worry about it and that's pretty convenient because you can just set it on the context and it will just propagate down yeah mm. but okay i guess we will deal with it for now okay so i guess the next question is how do i actually express this string here in a convenient way um i think i've seen some what is it called herodoc or something um stuff in other places yeah look at this a doc string uh yeah well this is the lexer um well a lexer i don't know what that is oh it's snake lexer that's funny da, 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 da. Uh, this Mm. Ah, I've seen something like this. What is the typical thing to do with that? How do you start a Herodoc again? It's like a two forward angle brackets, maybe? Two forward. Like this way. Uh, I think so. I don't really use those too often, though, so I'm going yeah. on. Yeah. Ancient memory. I think I've seen this somewhere though. Uh, I forgot. Maybe it's in the Jai Primer thing. Uh, something about strings. No. Ah, I've definitely seen this. Well, let's look at the PHP manual. Paradox <laughs> uh, syntax. Oh, four of them is what they use. Um, wait, did I do that right? Uh, yeah, to the left. No, three of them to the left. I see. Okay. Hmm. No. Um, where did I see it? Let me just see if I can trace. Strings. Oh, look at this. They had like a little instruction on how to, how to actually use the string builder. 
but not freeing this string. So I don't know what's up with that. Or is it actually, or will it free that by itself? No, surely not, right? Uh, that would be automatic memory management. Yeah, crazy. Um, Doesn't sound like Jai. Does not sound like Jai. Oh, here. Are they using an auto release pool or an arena or something like that? Well, so you can certainly do that yourself. Uh, okay. If I had seen it, then you would think it should be in here. Okay, I don't see it in here. Maybe it's somewhere with like the code generation stuff. No, this is all structs. Run and insert, that seems like a good. Oh, look at this. Haha, I found it. Okay. And, okay, not EOF, but end. Okay, great. That is what I was searching for. I knew I had some memory of this. All right. So it let's see. It doesn't matter what word you use there. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but I. Yeah, I, I feel like oftentimes people use EOF, or, or I guess in this example they use EOT. But here they used end, okay. Or they use here. That's why they're here docs. Right, exactly. Um, so I guess we'll use it like this. And then, oh, how do I do this? Do I have to do it like this? Because there's no, probably something like this. Uh, <laughs> my syntax highlighting is now all messed up. Wait, was it messed up in that other example? Uh, not really, huh? Okay. Well, okay, let's first just print out this thing. Let's see what that does, if it's got it correctly. Whoops. Okay. What if I indent it? Will it ignore the spaces in the beginning? No, okay, it does not. So we want this. So now I guess we can just say assert, well, equals equals. How is equals equals going? Like that shouldn't work, right? Like on structs. Uh, compare, who knows? Let's yeah. find out. Yeah. Um, I guess let me just try that in, with a print first. So I'll do this and say boards to equals equals expected board. Oh, I've, I've also been using sort of like camel case and uh, 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 snake case intermixed. Okay, whatever. I think it seems that sort of like snake case is more of a convention in Jai. I can change that later. False. Okay, that makes sense. So I guess we look at strings. Strings. Uh, la, la, la. Ring.gi. Oh, here. Yeah, look at this. Here they have a directory called string with a file in it called module.gi, and it's the only file. So I guess that that's kind of their index.html. Um, okay, so what do we have? Struct compare. Well, this is all commented out. Oh, it's just called compare. Compare and what is this hashtag must? I think I've seen this. Before. Uh, I think he talks. About, John talks about it in one of his videos. Uh, must. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what what it does though. Um, okay. Compare. Oh, equal. It even even has an equal. It even has an equal no case. Amazing. Um, but wait, what? Check this out. If one return a equals b, what? It looks like he may have implemented compare eventually or something like that. Like it's now built into the compiler. Interesting. Okay, actually, let's check this then. Because board string clearly is not the same as expected board right now because we got a false there. But what if we do a equals a? True. Oh, man. Okay, so yeah, I guess I guess this works now. So that's yeah, you're right. Okay, so there's just something wrong about our board. Trailing spaces. 
Uh, that sounds very plausible. Uh, let's also print out the expected board again. Uh, let's maybe do it something like this. Yeah, so that's a little bit hard to see because it doesn't tell us if yeah. there's trading spaces. Um, Try putting the, like the end at the end, like uh, left aligned, not with spaces in front of it. That's how it is in the, in the docs. What are you saying? The, the ending, like the word end, would you have at the end of that string? Oh, it should be here. The example you were looking at, it did not have spaces in front of it. Right, which yeah, okay. Which why your syntax highlighting is broken. Um, Oh, it's like this, I guess, or like this. Um, well, there's also the issue that we have these spaces at the end here. So let's actually just put those at the start. That should be a little bit easier. And then we can have sort of like this. Let's see if this does it. Yeah. Okay. And then actually, let's see if this end thing mattered if I put it here. Then it's still true. So you can actually put this anywhere. That's weird, I guess. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, that's odd, okay. But now let's turn this into an assert. And we can say, uh, incorrect boards. Okay, that's good enough for now, I guess. Uh, we don't even need to print the board anymore. Um, we can, say something like this, uh, expected percentage uh, actual percentage. And now we can say expected board what is true. Okay, so now if we make change here, ha ha ha, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Eventually we can have a, uh, uh, it's kind of nice if we do it like this, I guess. Okay, Eventually we, let's, yeah, exactly. But for now, this is, uh, this is quite good already. I would say, uh, we don't even leak any memory. We check like, yeah, we test our whole thing. Uh, we don't uh, even leak memory. Huh? We don't even leak memory. Yeah. <laughs> like the highest, the highest bar you can hold the C program to. I mean, definitely for me, I have to, I never have to worry about leaking memory, and now suddenly I have to worry about leaking memory. Okay. Um, cool. Where do we even go from here? I guess we should actually do some yeah, graphics. We have to play the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to do some graphics. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, we could render this to like a GL context. Or something like that. There's a, there's a nice little example that is um, sort of a space invaders type thing. Uh, so maybe we can steal some code from there. Um, because I have no idea how to do anything with, uh, with graphics. Oh, man. This is a lot of stuff. This is your chance to learn the 3D panel and Regal and stuff at the same time. Exactly. Somehow. Exactly. Um, well, I've done a little bit with OpenGL. I, I made, um, made this little thing that uh, compiled to WebAssembly uh, and that used OpenGL. Uh, OK, where do we even start with this? Uh, I guess there should be a main function somewhere. And oh, that looks pretty good. It has like a window width and height, and it calls in it OpenGL. It creates a window. Okay, that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, at least to get started. Yeah, let's just try that. Uh, but my syntax highlighting is screwed up here, so I'm just going to move this test function to the bottom. <laughs> Problem solved forever. So let's see if we do this. Well, actually, no, wait, there's one other thing I want to do first. And that is to actually pair, um, 
make it so you can pass in the size of the board. Because right now it's hard coded at the top here. And that seems pretty gross. And I want to know how to uh, basically dynamically allocate these arrays. Um, yeah, because this is pretty bad. Okay, so let's say we want to pass in rows. Um, let's say that's just an int and calls, and that's an int and bombs, and that's an int. And we're just not going to allow any default values. We just have to always be explicit about it. And then, okay, we're going to delete these here. So I guess, first of all, we run into the issue that our output type can't be, you know, can't contain rows and calls. So I guess we're just going to say that this is just some an array of some size. Um, or do you have to explicitly say it's going to be a pointer on the heap? What's that? Or do, just, or do you just like return by pointer? That's possible too, I guess. So we could return a pointer, but I kind of like, you know, like a, a board is two dimensional. I think it's kind of nice to um, to encode that information in the type. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't know if it will give us any problems later on, but that's why we're doing it, I guess. So, um, yeah. You know what? Let's just comment out all of this stuff for a second. <laughs> Let's just comment out a lot of stuff, actually, because all of this dep uh, depends on like the rows and calls. Uh, that's in our main function. Let's just not have this return anything. And let's see what ha what happens. Like, let's just get it to compile again. Six, four, two. We don't pass it in seed because we will just use the default for that. Okay, so that compiles at least. So then we have to redo our little empty locations thing. And this is going to crash now, right? Because this, uh, this has to be a constant number at the time of compilation. Yeah, it's saying non-constant expression, uh, expression in array declaration because at the start of the function, it needs to know how much stack, how much space to allocate on the stack. Um, so I guess instead we're going to also make this dynamic, but then how, how do we even create an array? Um, how does this work? <laughs> Let's, well, I guess we can see how this crashes first. Okay. Okay, that's good. It just has like a, a zero size. So I'm sure that there's some like array function to add stuff to an array. Um, maybe, or to allocate an array of a certain size. Yeah, there should be an array allocation function, right? Let's see, array.gi. It's a module. Fantastic. Array add. Okay, so array add can automatically have it grow. There's like a, a maybe grow function. So that's useful. But if we know the size up front, then surely we should just allocate the the right amount to begin with. Uh, Wait, how does maybe grow know how to basically grow it? That's... Oh, because a, uh, an array has as a size uh, in it. Um, Hold on, maybe grow, but how does it know what size to grow it to? Oh, I guess it just grows it by a bunch. Like here, it just uh, <laughs> it says a like bunch. okay, there's a rate allocated that it will just double it. If it uh, if it uh, see, exceeds that amount, maybe grow inline array if the count is greater than the allocated. Right. It reserves two. Two is the worst number. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because it means that um, your newly allocated ones can never fit in your previously deallocated ones. Hmm. Wait. They're always exactly one byte too large, which is why it's the worst one. Wait, can you repeat that? So, like, if you choose a number like uh, 1.5, mm -hmm. then, and you start with 10 elements, you'll have a, uh, a like, memory block of size 10. Mm -hmm. And then you need to reallocate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't, like, so you, you'll, you'll need to reallocate um, 
and then usually like if if you have if you if you haven't allocated anything else in the meantime this is on like a standard allocator like a normal heat based allocator right. if you haven't allocated anything else in the meantime it will allocate your 1.5 or, or your your 15 item area right after um, oh i see what you the mean the next one and then when you allocate the next time when you grow it again it'll be like uh 1.5 times 1.5 is like 2.25 which fits in the like combined block so you'll be able to combine blocks to fit your new area in mm, right but uh if if you grow your area by two every time then combining blocks will always result in a block in a new block that is exactly one item too small right which right, is why right. it's the, the worst number interesting doesn't that depend on like moving being able to move things like you basically per temporarily have like a partially deallocated thing Yes. Overlapping the like current value, like how do you move things, or is it assumed that the implementation has to move them for you? Yeah, it it, it assumes that the implementation will move them. Um, that's what realloc is for. Although realloc doesn't like call constructors and things like that, or move constructors. And things like that. No, but like, well, if you have like an allocator that is like smart enough, then it works. Okay, so like I found stuff. I found the thing that I care about, which is array reserve, um, which you can pass in a number of desired items. Mm -hmm. So that is great. Um, so I guess we're going to try to use that. So I guess we'll say array reserve empty locks size, and now this should be okay. Oh, I guess I have to pass in, wait, what? Uh, an, yeah, a pointer to, to an array. Ooh, wanted. Okay, what is the difference between these, these again? <laughs> I guess we have to explicitly say that this is a dynamically sized array. Okay, but now it's complaining, or like it crashes. Okay, maybe I'm not actually using array reserve correctly. What is this doing? Uh, array.data. Okay, what, the, what if I just uh, not do this stuff and just, just print out this empty box? Wait, this is this is already going wrong. Line twenty-two. No, wait. Line twenty-two is commented out. This is the same issue as before. What? There's nothing happening on line twenty-two. <laughs> yeah. So I had the same issue before, right? Where it just this seems alright. Oh wait, cannot open file main .exe. So there's something with the linker. What? Oh, okay. So this doesn't terminate properly. Wait, how do I delete the file in Windows? <laughs> ah. Remove file Windows. Come on. Dell, should have known. Access is denied. <laughs> is it still running or something? Is that the issue? How can it still be running? I guess I can close this whole thing. Just start a new prompt. Okay, that worked. Uh, so I guess we can keep this just to make sure every time and do like bin guy main guy man. Okay, that seems pretty good. Okay, so we have dynamic array of locations and this has a count, a data pointer, 
how many are allocated, uh, allocated and the actual allocator itself that is being used, which presumably it comes from the context. And it's important that it holds on to that because if you now pass this array to something with a different context that has a different allocator, then it might start using a different allocator in that context than it was created with. And so you have to hold on to it. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. What if we don't do this? And don't do array as a reserve. What what do we get? Can you see this by the way on the stream? Is this like big enough, or should I blow this up a little bit? How do I zoom in on this thing? Oh, I don't even know. Okay, whatever. Okay, so if you just have an array, then that has only the count and the data. Okay. Interesting. Um, oh, I see. I think sort of like this, this array with a count and a pointer is sort of the base class. And so you're not really supposed to create any of them, um, but you can pass stuff into it. Um, and I yeah, and look at this, like count and data are, are the first two elements. And so in our, like our dynamic array will cost uh, properly to, to an array because you just look at the first two, uh, two elements there and you just don't care about the allocator and the allocator. Okay, that makes sense. So we always just want to create a dynamic array and we've reserved it. Uh, so that all looks pretty good. So now let's look at like empty location zero then. That should have something in it because we reserved all this data for it. Or is it just not? Oh, wait. Oh, the count is still zero. Okay, so at this point we have like the, um, it's memory initialized, but logically there's still nothing in it. Okay, that makes sense. So now we just have to use array add. Uh, all the time, and that will do, uh huh. I don't know what this is, initializer of t, okay. Oh well, wait, what does this do? This just adds an item to an array, oh there's a couple of different things that you, uh, different overloaded methods here. Okay, so we just want this one and that will do the right thing, okay. That makes sense. So let's comment this out. So I guess what we want to do now is we want to create like a location here. Uh, and I forgot how to do sort of like these nice initializations sort of like in one line, but let's just try this first. And now we don't even need this empty locks index because we can just use array add instead and it will keep track of like uh, the last element so that's nice so we can use this and pass in i believe a pointer to the array yeah oops a pointer to empty locations and then the location itself Okay, so that does something. And now let's print out, for example, the first location. Okay, so that looks good. Can we do this part in just kind of like in line? I'm wondering. Uh, that would be nice, but it's also probably, probably something that they just don't do yet. Um, okay, let's look at the the space invaders thing because surely they must have like a whole bunch of uh look at this here it's like they no wait what's a good let's look at the they surely must be creating new structs all the time let's just see if there's something that looks like okay this is just mutating stuff here A, th a thing called a ship or something. Let's just see where one of these. Uh, uh, is 
like an entity and an entity manager. Okay, what is a bullet? This is an array of pointers to bullets. Okay, there's a new concept, I guess. Yeah, that will give us a, a pointer to a thing. Um, that's not really what we want here. We just want like an, uh, sort of an inline way to create something. Well, even here, they just kind of like update it manually. Okay, so maybe that's just the way to go. That seems fine. Sure, okay, let's just try that. Uh, or I guess we'll just keep this. Um, cool, so I guess we just have to uncomment some of this stuff. So this doesn't have anything in it that has to change. Okay, the board does. So the board, oh man, this is, this is, this is quite inconvenient, right? If we're going to have like an array of arrays, ooh, is that going to be fun? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to complain here again for the same reasons. Yeah, I mean, maybe you just don't want to do this kind of stuff. Maybe you just want to have like a, a continuous array because if you have an array that points, yeah, yeah, that's just not great, is it? Yeah, let's just make it like a, a one dimensional array and, <laughs> um, and not deal with it. Because otherwise, yeah, you have an array that points to like different things on the, uh, on the heap because you have to, uh, Allocate every subarray individually. Yeah, that def definitely does not sound fun. So let's just do an array reserve on the board as well. Um, and then is there some way to just initialize the whole thing all at once with zeros in it? That would be nice. Um, An array reset, that's not what we want. Array reserve doesn't set anything. And this stuff is scoped to the file itself. Array insert add, array add, multi argument version, array res. And now we already looked at that. A couple of copy operations. I guess we just have to do it manually. That is fine. Um, or can we just call like map set or something? Well, then we have to kind of like do it manually. Eh. I guess we could do that though. If anything there that is confusing me. Yeah, here there's like, uh, it does some introspection into the type. See if it has an initializer. Um, which you know is, is basically like the default values of the structs, I think. Um, I guess we could manually call a mem set directly. That does feel like a little bit gross. Uh, I wonder what they do in the space invaders thing if there's something like that. Uh, is there any cost to mem set directly? Is there any cost to array? Yeah, so here they just call a couple of array adds, but I guess they never have to like really reset everything to zero. Um, Okay, let's just do that. Oh, I guess this is <laughs> this is kind of an, a convenience function. If you call array add without anything, it will just make that new object in the array. Oh, we could have done that earlier. Ha ha ha, check this out. Okay, we can say here, okay, let's comment this out for a second to see if this works. We can say here location is array at, and then we use this, and then I think this is the more canonical way to do it, because our uh, array here, well, it returns a pointer to that object. Oh, uh, so the here point, we have um, to in place back returns a reference. Yeah, anything. yeah right. That is one full line shorter. 
<laughs> well, and and like an allocation shorter, I guess, and like a copy yeah, shorter. I'm serious. One one full line shorter is a big deal. <laughs> um, let's see what actually happens if we multiply that by the number of arrays you ever add things onto. Okay, so this seems to work. Uh, yeah, that seems correct. Um, great. Uh, that's pretty cool. And I guess the type of this thing will be a pointer to a location, and this will automatically f uh, follow. Uh, follow. I think this is automatically sort of like a, a pointer dereference uh, implicit in here, because yeah, like it's, I guess the C plus plus we would have to do something like this. Uh, Does it like go where it's just totally implicit? Yeah, I think. So. Does that too. Well, at least. Maybe Rust as well. What's that? I think maybe Rust does that as well. Mm -hmm. Go length, where you just you do dot, and it's like, oh, I know this is a pointer. Yeah, it's like why why have different syntax for that? I guess yeah. like this. Because C plus <laughs> plus was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so okay, so that makes sense. So I guess we can keep going. And so we can do something similar for initializing this one. So we have reserved the board, but now we can do like zero to size minus one, and then just do array add on uh, on board. And that is that. That will just initialize it to zero. And then here, uh, let's get rid of this one. And then here we just have to change this to be working on a one dimensional uh, array, so um, I guess we uh, multiply every row by the number of columns. Um, so that's fine. In fact, <laughs> we don't even we can just instead of these random locations. Yeah, why do we why would do we even bother with these locations anymore? We should just use indices. Bye. Just throw it away. Uh, we just make this, uh, uh, well, I guess this is U8. Um, and here we can, we don't have to do any of this stuff. We can just say, and Okay, fantastic. Uh, and then here, why even bother? So this location now is just like an index. So we can just use that directly. Uh, but then here we do have to get, uh, we do have to get funky. Ah, maybe it is convenient to, I don't know, whatever. Okay, I'm just going to keep whatever we had before. Okay. Uh, because it is a little bit more convenient here to do this because now we just have access to the location row and column and then here we just have to do a similar thing where it's like you just this. gave me an idea for writing this in C++ and you could actually make the x coordinates and the y coordinates different types mm. <laughs> yeah I, never mix them up. I think you can do that here as well I guess we could have like uh, like a, like a rows, which is like an int, and like calls, which is like an int, and then use like rows and calls here. I don't know if that's possible. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if there's like a new type sort of thing. Uh, well, let's comment this stuff out to just see if that part compiles. Yeah, that compiles. <laughs> Does it actually prevent you from mixing them up though? That's a good question. It's probably... It might not. No, I don't think it, it, it does. Yeah, because know. here we can just set it to like an arbitrary number here. Um, yeah. There's probably something that you can do there though. I don't know the type system well enough yet. Uh, there's certainly like all sorts of metaprogramming stuff that you can do <laughs> to create your lint to find that. But yeah, I don't know. There might be something a bit more directly built in for that. Um, that would be cool at least. So let's see. So here we have array add, but it's not happy. Oh, this is what hashtag uh, or like yeah, what uh, what this must tag means. Hello. 
Who are you? It's Good. Yuri. Oh, Yuri! Hello! Yuri, Hello. you are on a Twitch live stream. How's it going, guys? Good, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. Surviving? Surviving the quarantine. Yeah. Just so you know, Yuri, you are currently on a Twitch live stream. Cool. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, so this is what this hashtag must thing means. Uh, okay. You must actually use the, uh, the, the return value. You cannot oh, just implicitly okay. ignore it. Discard. Yeah, exactly. So I guess we have to explicitly ignore it. I don't know if we can do something like void or something here. Or like dummy equals. I think this might do. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, in this case, it's okay because we're going to modify this stuff later and just not right now. Um, so we're okay with this. Uh, I guess we could also just initialize it the other way by like creating it and then uh, creating the value and then uh, updating it later um, or like updating it immediately by looking at the, the values around uh, around it. But we've coded it like this already. Okay, so that is good. So let's return the board and finish up the rest of the program again. So this will be a... Um, I guess they don't really, at this point we don't care anymore that it's a dynamic array because we don't want to do any reallocations on it. Uh, we just at some point want to free it. Um, and if we look at what did the thing return earlier? Well, this is too long ago, I guess. Um, yeah, I think all, all that there was was like the allocator and so on. Um, and we just don't really, do we care about that still? Probably not. Maybe. I don't know how freeing would work with that. Okay, anyway, we can just for now return an array like that and let's see if that works. Maybe it doesn't even let me do that. Uh, procedure has made it missing its body. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's this arrow thing. Okay. Okay, so that works. Hi, Yuri. Hi. That was, that was nice to you. Thanks for dropping in. All right, I'll join probably in the next one. See ya. Maybe the next one will be in person, although probably not. That's probably too soon. We'll see. See ya. Bye. Okay, so let's see. So here we have board to string, and here we just need to take a board that is some sort of array. Uh, well, but we need the, the information of like how many columns there are. Uh, that is so annoying. Okay, I guess we will have to have a struct for this. So we can have a board struct that has like the number of columns and that it has the number of, um, or like that it has like the actual array in it. I guess we could call it data. Okay. So, well, this is an interesting question. How do we return a struct from a function? Is that possible? Will that, is that even possible? <laughs> uh, how does returning a, f uh, how does returning a function, uh, a, a struct from a function work in other languages? Like, is there something that will allocate on the heap? I just genuinely don't know how this stuff is being done in other, uh, in like C or something. No, okay, so you can only return a pointer to something. Okay, well, that seems fine. We can just create this, uh, this. We can learn how to do this new thing. Okay, all right, let's do that. So I guess we will return a pointer to a board. And here we will have, instead of calling board, we will um, board just this thing. We will uh, do board is a new board. And then here we will just have to operate on board.data. 
Well, let's see if that works first. We can comment this stuff out. Attempt to pass non-dynamic array. Oh, I guess at this point we need to know that it's a dynamic array. Well, we can also do that later because I feel like that's not a really great thing to be passing around. It seems like too much information for other people to have. So let's just revert this back to what we had here. And I guess at the end, uh, let's just rename this thing to port data. And then at the end here we can, oh, but wait a minute. Yeah, no, that should be okay. Yeah, so we can say, this is a new board. Port.calls is calls. Port.data is port data. This should be okay, I think. Let's see if that works. Now we're returning, yeah, okay. Uh, sure. Type mismatch, left type, an array of S32. Wait, where am I using S32? Oh, yeah, whoopsie. Oh, great. Okay, so that works. So it just copies that. That seems very reasonable. And I guess here we want to have the board being a pointer to a board. And then, yeah, this seems fine. So basically, we can infer rows. So rows is the length of the board. So board dot uh, data dot count, I believe, divided by the number of columns. And here we have port of calls. And so the value that we access here is this is the row time port of calls that's plus the column. Okay. So that's pretty good. Uh, oh yeah, we have to get this on board of the data. All right, so this still works. Let's see if our test case works. <laughs> so I guess we can uncomment our tests again. Procedure call, oh yeah, right. We now have to actually specify these numbers explicitly. So what did we use? Six, four, and 10, I believe. And I guess our test case succeeds. Let's just change this for a second. Yeah, great. Okay, so everything still works. Amazing. I did not expect that. <laughs> uh, wait, did I save this file? Uh, yeah, oh, so this is weird. So now it can't delete main again. When it gets into a fatal, into a panic, the the file stays open. Like, oh, uh, I guess Control C doesn't work or something. Okay, I don't know how this stuff works in Windows. Let's just see. Can I do a back now. Just do it manually from now on because I just don't trust this stuff. Okay, that is pretty good. Okay, I guess we'll comment out our test again. Let's do one more little thing of cleanup because I've been using sort of like all these camel case things here, and there's some uh, that doesn't really seem to be quite a convention here. Uh, this. Let's just clean that up. What else do I have? Board data. Interestingly, String Builder uses, okay, so they use underscores, but they do use like capital letters. Uh, here we have expected board. Let's 
called the collective blood stream. Let's call this actual. Uh, okay, well, this is good enough. And did they have anything else that they wanted to clean up? No, this looks pretty good. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Okay, let me take a little break and go to the bathroom. And then we keep on going. All right. Okay, so I guess we can go back to the OpenGL stuff and see if we can get that to work. Uh, yeah, we don't need any sound player stuff. Okay, so let's just let's just try this. So we'll just have like a little window, 300 by 300, and just see if that even works. Uh, window name, I don't know, Minesweeper. Oh yeah, this is nice. We can have uh, named arguments. That is right. We should probably do that here. With, or like um, rows equals 6, columns equals 4, columns equals 10, uh, seeds equals 1, to 3. That's a lot clearer. Okay, let's just make sure that that part is still working. That is a nice feature though. Named variables. Okay, so that still works. Okay, so let's see. Can we get OpenGL to work? Also, this, <laughs> this is very curious. What does this XX thing mean here? I've seen that in a few places now. We have like XX width, XX height. What does that mean? Yeah, I was curious about that too. Is it like a reference or something? Annotation? Does it mean auto? Yeah, maybe. I think, I think, I think like dereferencing a pointer is this. 
like to like sort of like a left bit bit shift. But what is X X? What what did you say, Jacob? I was guessing if it's maybe passing them by reference or oh. maybe just casting them to a different type or something. But yeah, okay. Let's look at some some places where this is being done. So here, just doing like X X current mouse X. Well, there's still the the C thing. Yeah, maybe it's a casting thing. That seems that seems very possible. Um, I don't remember seeing it in any of the the videos or so that John has put out. Um, it's been quite a used quite a lot. Uh, let's see. Yeah. These are all examples. Yeah, my best guess is that it's sort of a, yeah, that it's a shortcut for some sort of a casting operation. That's, that's a bit of a weird syntax. Oh, check this out. Aha, because we have a program that's using the AST that the compiler gives you, prints out a program. And so here it says cast flags is auto aha uh -huh. okay so this is uh basically an auto cast and then yeah this is the other cast where you explicitly uh, have a cast you can have a cast Wait. with no so check the, the xx syntax is like user defined no 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 it is compiler defined this this program here is just a program that given an ast prints back a jai uh, a jai program Whoa. so this pro yeah this 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 user level program has to stay uh, in sync with the compiler implementation. Um, that is very useful though. Okay, so it's basically a casting operation. That makes sense. So I guess, well, why? Let's see, where is init open GLE for the find? Um, oh, the invaders thing itself has like an open GL thing. Uh, but it doesn't really do very much. So I guess we can just inline this because I don't want to do all of these things necessarily. Yeah, I guess it's just, it's useful to kind of like learn how to do this stuff ourselves. Let's just copy this in. Um, well, where are, where are these things defined? I guess that is coming from GL. Okay, so that's the library. Uh, great. Uh, well, one second. Where's this window thing? This is not, is it even used for anything? <laughs> okay, so that's useless. Weird. And then a GL. Where's this GL variable being declared? I need to see that. <laughs> okay. Is that just coming from like the GL library or something? Okay, we have a GL.gi. Okay, so here, saying using GL, but where is that coming from? Is that defined anywhere here? Well, here it calls stuff explicitly. GL dot. Is that like a global that is coming from somewhere? Must be. Okay, whatever. Uh, I believe it. I guess that's coming from glad core. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so here there's a lot of constants and stuff like that. Whoa, a lot of constants. I guess that's what you get if you're doing game programming, huh? Well, let's just search globally for GL. Okay, I don't know where that's supposed to be found. Maybe it's something else that's 
Okay, whatever. Who knows? But surely it must be doing something right. Gosh, what did I do there? <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, good, so let's just import GL, I guess. That seems like the most fundamental thing. And then we have a bunch of stuff to do here. So we have to create a context. So this is our window. Uh, so we pass that in here. The minimum GL major version, what, they, what do they use for that? Okay, so that is defined here. It's three and three. Okay, sure. Minor, so I guess we require to using OpenGL 3.3. Sure, that's uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, what is this dump gl errors thing? Okay, that's a function that is being called in uh, in the library, so we that's fine. We don't need to do anything with that. Gl load, that seems fine. Gl enable bu debug output seems fine too. Um, what are we missing then? Um, so I guess from this OpenGL function here, but we weren't even doing anything with this width and this height. That's so bizarre. Like why, why do we have all these functions here and we're not doing anything with them? I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, but okay, fine. Let's just not then. Let's just not bother with any of these things. Um, oh, wait, they were already being passed here. Uh, maybe this was factored out or something. Maybe it used to call create window as well and just forgot to remove those variables or something. I don't know. In any case, we'll just pass this in directly and see if this works. All right. If this works, that is, would be very surprising to me. Okay, great. It doesn't work. Uh, create window. Where is that coming from? Oops, what did I do? Create window. Create window program export. Modules GL. The setup has been moved to create window, but it may still be beneficial to keep this here. Now, what is this? Oh, okay, that doesn't seem too interesting. That's to us. So I guess there's another module that is all about creating windows. Uh, One of I, those comments said it was mgl.gi. Is it not in there? Uh, let's see. So there's a couple of places here where it's being defined. Oh, there's a module called window creation. Great. So where does that get imported? OK, so I guess all of those things just import that directly. So we will as well. Okay, that seems reasonable. Okay. Whoa, I saw a window. Well, you didn't see it because it appeared on my other screen, but it was there for sure. Okay, that is very encouraging. Is there some sort of sleep function so that we can <laughs> kind of keep it around for a little bit? Well, let's see, how do, how do they do that in the invaders? What, what other things do they do? So in our main function here, they define another little function that is a load sound thing. And then at some Probably point- like a well don't exit for the next frame kind of thing. Right, right, there should be some loop somewhere. Yeah, here, well, not shoot quit game, do a bunch of stuff. I just, I guess I don't want to like just burn my CPU right now, but I guess I could. <laughs> I could do that for a second, why not? Uh, Actually, probably Windows would tell you the program stop responding and kill it. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, I've definitely like created accidental infinite loops with no interaction before. Right. Uh, well, I guess we could just print something. Uh, let's let's just see real quick if there's a sleep function. Nano sleep. Great. Oh, sleep milliseconds. Uh, that seems useful. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's just do a big sleep at the end of our program. Great. Cool. 
Oh, well, I can't actually move my window now. It's kind of like just sitting here and saying that it's not responding. Oh, they hear this. Check it out. It is still not responding though. Nice. Um, nice. Okay, that works. Uh, progress. Let's see. So, I guess there's a shit ton of setup that we have to do in this invaders program, but let's see what's the bare minimum that we can get away with. So surely all this music stuff we don't care about for now. Um, there's a couple of blend functions. It's disabling some flags, enabling some other flags. Text shaders. We don't care about that for now, I guess. I think you do. You'll need to render something. Yeah, we will need to render You'll something. You need to at least compile a shader that says make every pixel red. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, that is a good point. Okay, so let's just look through this for a second to see what the simplest shader is that we could uh, that we could use. So there's like this text shader and sprite shader are sort of like defined elsewhere, I guess. It's coming from these strings. Um, so we can look them up in a second. Uh, it's doing some texture initialization. Uh, what is this? I see. So this is setting up all the buffers uh, for both the text and the uh, and the sprites. Oh, see this. Okay, so this might be easier than doing a shader. It's just doing like just filling up the the canvas with uh, with uh, a color. That seems like a smaller step at first. Okay, so we can try that. And then how do we prevent the whole thing from like just burning through? Because uh, this is just a while loop. Or is it just kind of like going as fast as it can? I mean, maybe that's fine. Yeah, it seems to... It, it might be like limited by like your frame, your um, monitor frame speed or something. Right, but I don't know what would do that. Yeah, there might be some like blocking GPU call or something like that. Yeah, maybe even these like, uh, okay, let's just try this then. And wait, how is it handling the shoot, uh, shoot quit game? That seems like pretty relevant. Is it like some key press or something? I guess it's like, if you lose the game, it can set it to true. Or in this case, there's like events in the frame. Uh, if that's like a keyboard, Escape event. Where's getting those from? So is there a function to get current events from the OS that's like a yield sort of thing? Or yeah, maybe. Makes it not think it's not responding. So in here we're in Invader Simulate and it's getting something from this thing called event this frame. But if I search this file, there's no no other matches. So maybe that is a global that gets defined elsewhere. Um, events this frame input okay so there's this input thing here uh, and it's putting events in there okay well that seems quite quite all right to use that um, I suppose we have to initialize this input some at some point um, So is there something for that here? Do we import input, for example? Well, no mention of input. <laughs> okay. Where? Let's look at the top of this file. Input handler routines, platform independent. Uh, well, who imports inputs? Wait, okay, there it is being. Oh, they import it there in the OpenGL.ji. Okay, sure. In here, do we do anything with input then? Ah, okay, well, let's first use it. That seems like pretty useful to be able to exit our program. Uh, and then let's just look at the input thing. Is there like some initialization method yet that we have to call that says like start capturing inputs or something like that? Is a window resize? No. Is this being called anywhere? Mm 
put OS X, for example, now. Okay. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Let's just start actually, yeah, drawing some stuff on the screen then. So, uh, we have initialized OpenGL at this point. I don't know, yeah, okay, all these land flags, we can just ignore them for now, I guess. Uh, yeah, so let's just do this thing. Let's just try to do this clear color in a loop. So let's see. We'll do this. And then just for shits and giggles, let's try. Uh, do we need the next line as well? Do we need this? Color yes. buff a bit. What is the that for? First, the clear color is just setting the color. Oh, so I see. Applying it. That makes a lot of sense. Really stupid. Okay, let's see. Is this defined? Yeah, okay, so this is probably the. Oh, wait. Showed. Ah, oh, check that out. This uh, Sublime Text plugin actually shows you where it's defined. Fantastic. Um, okay, that's very useful. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, and then I guess we can loop through these events. I'm going to change color slightly just so you can see that it's actually looping. Yeah, that's a good. Point. Um, add like number of milliseconds or something. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, let's just do like a loop counter. Uh, and then we can do something like. Does this seem reasonable? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think it's probably pretty fast if it's happening like 16 frames. Yeah. Well, you have nothing controlling it. It's yeah, I mean, it's, if it's... Speed. Yeah. Let's, let, yeah, let's see how fast that is. And then let's also copy in this stuff. Do they have a sleep for like a target frame rate or something? I don't know. I didn't really see anything. Or, I, I saw there was like a decent flag, but it didn't look like it was used. Yeah, that didn't seem used in that function that we were looking at earlier. So I don't know what's, yeah, I don't really see anything. Okay, well, I guess here, yeah, it just looks at like what was the last time. It doesn't seem that there's like anything that's slowing stuff down here. Wait, there's a get time or something, right? Where? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But do they ever do this? Do they ever do a what? Asleep. Yeah, I don't see it. Maybe it's outside this? Okay. Yeah, so outside here I also didn't see it. Like there was there's a main loop that is here. It's doing some allocation and defer yeah, I don't see it here either. Maybe update window events or something. Yeah, yeah maybe it just isn't. Maybe it just renders as fast as possible, although that seems unnecessary. Right. Okay, this has like multiple implementations. Let's look at the window, the Windows one. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem like it's doing input per frame. Yeah. Oh, I guess we do have to call this up the win window events if we want to actually get those events. Haha. <laughs> well, that is very useful. So, I think here they called it at the end of the thing. So maybe we should do it also there, but that seems like a little bit strange, but oh, I guess it doesn't matter all that much. Let's just stick it there. And then here we just want to keep the escape clause. Uh, So I guess here we can say 
pursuit quit game is false. Okay. This will probably not compile. Let's see. Oh, is it like? Oh, it is like that. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was like. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. I have a window, but it's not really doing anything, and it is very slow. And I'm certainly not seeing any colors <laughs> getting changed. Oh, that's a bummer. It didn't even give you the initial color. Right. It's just like a white window. Uh, well, can I press the escape button? Ooh, I think that did work. Wait, I don't believe it. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Okay, I'm going to press the escape button. Yeah, okay, the escape button works. Okay, at least that's something. Uh, that's, that's great. But this clear stuff evidently does not work. Um, what are those arguments to create context? Where do you see? Oh, here. Ooh, yeah. Oh, this is, I think, the minimum and the, the major and the minor uh, minimum version of OpenGL. Oh. Yeah. Um, we can look at that real quick. You could try that dump GL errors or something, like put it. Yeah, I think we can even just copy of that so you can see if there's any more errors. Uh, which one? This this thing here. I think the the line after it is printing out errors, so maybe you might be able to see more errors. Well, this saying like show the debug output, but I didn't see anything here. You might have to call that in the loop. They didn't call it in the loop in the other thing. So they didn't have errors in the other program. Right, but then why would you even call it at all? I don't know. Uh, well, okay, let's see what else they are doing. I mean, there's a couple of these things. Let's just call these the same way they do. Because at this point, I don't, just don't know. No, I don't think it should matter. Yeah, they shouldn't try it. Like, this is just like... Wait, there was an init GL that you're not calling. Ooh, shoot. Oh, no, wait. This is sound player. Where did you see the init? It's further up. No, this... I inlined this function, basically, a little a little oh. while ago. Like, this, this stuff is in there. I see. Um... Okay, just added this stuff. I don't think it should matter at all, but let's, let's just make absolutely sure. Yeah, I still don't see anything happening. I mean, maybe this clear stuff. What does this do, for example? Maybe it doesn't actually set the color. Uh, okay, let's just uh, check out. Uh, Is there anything at the end of the function? At the end of the loop? Right. It's like display. Like swap buffer. Swap buffers. Ooh, that. that might actually be important. That seems important. What no, but this? you don't. I mean, you don't even have any buffers. <laughs> right, so but I don't know. But I think. Uh, but maybe maybe it's like just uh, doing this clearing in like uh, OpenGL's buffer, and then you actually have yeah. to like commit yeah. it to the screen. Uh, that does seem important. Okay, let's just try it at least. I would have thought you would have. To enable that or something. But... Yeah, okay, so what will happen? Oh! Whoa, cool. All right, okay. 
Well spotted. Okay, that's pretty good. I feel like we have something to work with now. Um, and it's it's actually responsive now as well. <laughs> Which is, I guess, maybe the swap buff buffer stick is the thing that actually takes some time and does maybe some vertical syncing or something. Is it the update events that makes it makes Windows realize it's responding? Mm. Or the swap buffers? I think, that, I think it might be swap buffers. Because uh, we uh, we had the, the window events thing already and it worked yeah. with escape, yeah. uh, but it was still kind of slow. Okay, this is uh, this is cool. Um, right now you need a shader. Now I need a shader. Okay, let's see how much time do we have. Okay, I think I'm okay to go for another like forty five minutes or so, but then I'm really going to call it. Uh, yeah 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 yeah. Shaders. Well, sprites. We really need sprites. Um, I don't care that much for shaders, unless we need shaders to do sprites. <laughs> um, but I guess we do need shaders for sprites because this is a sprite shader. All right, all right. Um, well, okay, let's see for a second how one of these sprites works. Because uh, that seems useful. Uh, Draw ship at. Okay, that seems like a good, a good place to start. Uh, render sprite quad centered. That seems sort of like the main function to do the spriting. So how does that work? So you pass it a texture, and a position, and a size, and a color. Okay, that all seems like very reasonable. Um, Okay, there's some functions to actually uh, sort of like use that texture. Um, I guess the texture is just an int, so there's just a predefined set of textures somewhere. And then we have to use the sprite uh, VAO, which I don't know what it stands for, but it must be a shader, a shader thing. Vertex array object. Ah. Not that that clarifies anything. <laughs> and then there's a vertex buffer object or binary object. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So those two seem to be like a global global variables. So I'm assuming that these that these integers are just sort of like um, almost like pointers into like OpenGL stuff. Um, okay. Uh, I think they're like indices, but yeah. 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 Sure. But yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh wait, and here are the, the shaders. So okay, this, so this is extremely simple. The sprite shader. Uh, well, there's two versions. What are the differences? Oh, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. Okay, and both are pretty simple. It looks like. What does this one do? It's like okay. Uh, it's just applying like the camera projection. Yeah, you probably will be able to delete a bunch of that. Yeah, but I think that's well, I mean this 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 is a two D game already, so I don't think that the camera can really move here. Oh, interesting. Uh, so I don't know <laughs> what. Just put a, a identity matrix in for that. It might be. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if this. Maybe there's a secret three D mode. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this projection stuff is only being used in the shader, so... Uh, That's funny. Well, well, maybe it's in a different file. You might not file. see where they fill in the value, because it might be like index 1. Or index oh, no, wait, here it is. Instead of my name. It says here, like, orthographic projection. Okay, there we go. Uh, matrix. So that's why I set the matrix as the value for parameter 1. Yeah. Okay, well, that seems... Fine. I mean, we can. Ugh, this all this stuff is more complicated than I want it to be. I guess I just don't know OpenGL at all, and I just want to say, just draw some pixels at this location. Um, it's not how, how it's yeah, I know. Um, but that's okay. I guess we can just copy some of this stuff and try to get it to work. Um, that seems fine. Uh, 
Uh, let's get rid of this stuff here. Okay, so we just need to get our vertex and fragment shaders in there as well, which are defined in this other place. Or you know what? Let's just not do sprites. Let's just do this whole thing with just like drawing triangles or like uh, just primitive shapes. We don't have to have like yeah. a super fancy skip, OpenGL. Skip the texture stuff. What's that? Skip the texture stuff, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's just like way too fancy. Um, okay, so I guess I just want to know how to do like a little... Um, like a little polygon, I guess. Then, but if we have a polygon, we can do. Probably, it it has. I think it has that code. It probably has the vertices of a square in there somewhere. Um, you mean in the yeah. invaders? Yeah. In order to render the sprite at a position, it must make a square. That's probably box. true. That's probably the VBO thing. Uh. See, look at where it sets up the VBO. Or VAO, whatever. Yeah, so far. Yeah. Where do they put the data in? Is there. Uh, what? If you go a little bit down, is there actual data that they're putting in? Wait, is it. Uh... Wait, I'm actually. So, as, sorry, as an aside, curious what this does, like what does it return? Does it return like a... Wait, okay, so you can return structs. Okay, that is good to That's know, actually. Triple dash. What is that? That means like leave it un uninitialized. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, by default it will initialize stuff and you should only use the triple dash if you, you really explicitly don't want to. Um, that's kind of nice actually. Okay, let me, um, okay, so it will basically just do a copy, I guess. Uh, so instead of uh, returning like a pointer to a board, we can here just have like an actual board. Sorry, I just want to clean this up now I know this. Uh, this is a board and I guess I can keep it uninitialized. Ha <laughs> ha, we want to use all the features. And yes. then here we don't have to have a pointer either. And then that is that, I guess. Okay, let me just make sure that this still works. I run the tests. Okay, so this still works. Great. Okay, that was a little aside. Um, so yeah, they have oh, this. Uh, okay, you see where it says sprite vertices? That's your square. Uh, sprite vertices. Oh, here. 286, yeah. Those are going to be probably the vertices of the square. Yeah, where are these? Oh, I guess they're just like defined at the top or something. I think it's a constant array, yeah. Oh yeah, I saw this earlier. Right. Yeah. yeah, in our case, we don't really need the texture stuff, I guess, uh, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's just saying, like, whenever you have, like, a coordinate, it will, like, draw the texture sort of around that, so that co coordinate will be the middle of your texture, and all your textures are square. Uh, and it will be, yeah, it's all 0.5, so that it's, like... Half of yeah, so that your your width will be the actual width of the, the texture that you yeah. that you want. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let's see what we can do with that. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to look up online somewhere else is something that might be simpler. So just like uh, uh, I just copy the 
Well, because it has all the texture stuff in there, and I don't want that. Uh, yeah, I think you should be able to delete it, but yeah, I mean, you'll find a simple example probably. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, this is probably more complicated. Than that, so I don't know. I also think the WebGL APIs are a little bit different, so I'm not familiar with. Yeah, exactly. Okay, look at this. This is very simple. Ah, this is exactly what I want. <laughs> like, I don't want to deal with buffers. Uh, I... Yeah, that seems that seems great for yeah for the the level of simplicity that we are dealing yeah. with. Not efficient, but good enough for my paper. Exactly. Okay, so I guess we can do that here. And I guess we can even just keep these values and just see what happens. Yeah. Let's see if it even, co uh, if it even compiles. The, oh, it doesn't. Geo color. coordinates need to be between minus one and one or something. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's okay. interesting. Do uh, I have the function to set the color? Right. Well, so this is interesting. I suspect that we just don't need the 3F thing at the end because we know we have a type uh, system in which we can infer that. Oh, no, okay, still not. All right, let's actually search for geocolor then. Uh, oh, it does have... Oh, maybe I need to explicit, uh, explicitly... XX. Oh, that's also possible. Well, no, it said here that, I, that it doesn't know it at all. Oh, um, yeah. But I think it only includes glad uh, base by default. So if we and this is glad all. So if we go here to the top, I believe I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, look at this compatibility plus all extensions. So I guess we can just explicitly include uh, glad all in our program. Uh, so I guess that this should work. I don't actually know what the difference is between import and load. I think maybe load. Yeah, I don't know actually. All right, well, let's see. Oh, do I have to do the. Because I I'm suspect on... your coordinates are going to be off screen. Of your yeah, no, I think you're right. I just want to get it to compile I think first. It should be between negative one and one. Yeah, we'll do that in a sec. Uh, okay, I don't know how to, if it's possible to even go into a, oh, maybe I should drop the extension. Okay, that's better. Redeclaration, ah, uh, okay, so I can't just, I have to actually go into that other GL file and then comment this line and comment back this line because it declares some global variables. Woo! Oh no! What's the difference between load and import? I don't know. I was just wondering that too. I wonder if one of them is like actual, like what you would uh, get with a C preprocessor, and one is more of a module system. Yeah, and like sure. I have an if OS switch import Nintendo SDK, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, OS switch, as in running on the switch. Not right. Not well, a switch, switch statement yeah. or something, yeah. Or switching between things. Uh, okay, so it does have these module parameters where you can say enable compatibility profile. I don't know what that does. I mean, most of, a lot of this stuff might just not really be built yet. Okay, so that is not anywhere. And this one, uh, it's just giving me all this stuff. <laughs> what is this? HGLIC. Oh, this is like in Windows. So do we just first have to include Windows as well? Uh... If I do an import Windows here, will that help? Uh, 
It does not. Okay. But what if I include this Windows thing in that other file? Okay, well that helps. That helps a lot. But GL load is not happy. Oh wait, do I have to load both of these or something? Oh no, that's that issue again. Ooh. Well, glad all does not seem to be too easy to work with. Oh, oh wait, here it's called GL and here it's called GL procedures. Okay, so I guess I'll just go to this GL procedures and change that to just GL. I guess people just don't really use this very much. Okay, that's compiled. And it still runs. Okay. Um, and there's not a big, there's not a big square on top of everything. So let's try to do that, I guess. Those changes would be like 0 0.5, 0 0.5 or something. Uh, all these numbers? I think the well, well, we can go back to your example and see if they have a, a function to set the size. Yeah. Because I think see. the default uh, bounds are like minus one to one. Okay, well okay, so there's a couple of other things that yeah, they do. The geo ortho ten by ten by two. Right. So by default it's like two by two, I think. Yeah. We can also just set that to the window size or something if we wanted Yeah. If we want to use that but yeah maybe it's easier to just use one 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 everywhere so that we can just uh, yeah just use like uh, numbers between zero and one yeah, uh, I don't think you need the projection do you? interesting I don't know maybe which one? because it doesn't hurt the, the projection you don't think we need it? It's weird, yeah, I don't know Uh, oh, and they use this glut stuff, which we don't use right now, I think. Um, oh, because it has a built-in main function. Yeah. That's okay. We can just use what we're using. Um, let's just see if this... Okay, so we're just using their example exactly, and so that should at least work now. Oh, shit. Did I... Structures. Oh yeah, look at this. This is a <laughs> this is a fun little uh, warning. This is a very big struct, I guess. <laughs> it can also say that for for functions, if you have a polymorphic function that gets called with a lot of types, and therefore generates like a lot of code. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, sweet! Look at this. <laughs> Okay. Um, nice. Well, I feel like we have all the tools in our tool belt now to create a Minesweeper game. I mean, what more do you want? Let's see. So. I guess uh, we can say something like this here. Like, uh, what did we say? Rows six calls is four, ten, and then we can say here word okay, and we can do something like uh, cell size. Uh, like 10 okay and then yeah how, how does this GL ortho thing work exactly it's still a question that I have like what are all the different parameters to it 
Uh, oh, I see. X1, X2, Y1, Y2, Z1, Z2. Okay. So I guess we just do this. Is this going to be fine? I hope so. Let's just try to get that same rectangle on the screen. <coughs> yeah, I mean, this is pretty good. Oh, uh, it's too small. I can't drag it to you. Okay, let me make my cell size a little bit bigger. Ah, I don't know, 10 times bigger is probably good. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So I guess we can just start with, uh, with drawing all the cells. Ah, uh, oh man, I guess we'll need the numbers at some point, so we might need a, a text function. Well, I don't need... It. I mean, there might be helper functions to just like draw some text on the screen without having to do a whole text shader and all of that nonsense. Yeah, um, I did see a draw text function somewhere. Have you have you run the um the Space Invaders game yet? The what? Space Invaders game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It didn't work on my Ubuntu instance on my Parallels uh, VM on my Mac. So that is why, one of the reasons why I switched to this Windows computer. Um, okay, but I guess the simplest thing that we can do is just sort of like draw each cell with like a random color or something, or like a little rainbow pattern or something like that. Um, that would be pretty fun. So let's try to do that. So it's just going to be very inefficient, but you know, whatever. So let's say for R, what is the syntax again? Oh yeah, it is like this. Uh, rows minus one. Let's see, false minus one. Then, oops, I guess we'll have the, the colors red go from uh, R to rows. Will this be a floating point division? Probably not, right? So we should probably make it one. How do I do that? that? Uh, do something like this. Um, and at some point we actually need something like this, right? Like, uh, well, it might be easier to actually just work with uh, with the same width and height. Yeah, let's just maybe do that. Uh, is that going to be easier? Yeah, it's probably going to be easier. Do you guys know if in OpenGL they count from like the bottom left or from the top left or how does that work? Well, you just set up your bounds. I think it's positive is up and right. Okay, so it's like like a chart. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit but annoying. You can change that, I think, if you 
Yeah, I guess we can put some negative sign somewhere and flip the whole thing. Um, yeah, okay. We'll do that later. Thank you. We can do something like this. Um, See if this is any good. Okay, so we have to go from x1, y1 to, for example, x2, y1, and to like x2, y2, and then to like x1, y2. I don't know what direction it is, but does it really matter? Um, okay, let's see if this does something. Oh. Oh, they want floats. So, I guess we do the XX thing. <laughs> Using a nice language feature. Uh, no. S64. Oh. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Oh, all these things. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, <laughs> is this very readable? XX, X1, XX, Y. <laughs> Where one well, is. If your editor highlighted it. <laughs> right, that's true. Okay, at least I've compiled. Okay, at least this is doing something. Here, check this out. This is not quite what I imagined. Um, Are they different sizes? It appears so. I am probably doing something wrong. But what am I doing wrong? Um... So the X's are based on the columns, the Y's are based on the rows, that is correct. Um, uh, X to Y Yeah, so I'm going from like one corner to another yeah. corner, uh, to another corner, to another corner. I don't know if this order matters. Um, and then I've set this the size of this thing to like the width and the height of the window so that we only have to kind of like think yeah I can just think in pixels which is I guess is more natural for me um, yeah am I doing something obviously wrong here <laughs> Just like any any game developers like watching this, they should immediately know this, right? Like, we are just very stupid about this kind of stuff. Well, I'll try changing something and see what changes. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, what do I want to change? Uh, I guess I can just like try plugging in some values myself first. So I can say like x1 is 10, x2 is 20, y1 is 10, y2 is 20. So now I expect just like a 10 by 10 square uh, in the top, no, in the bottom left, I guess, if your coordinate system is indeed right. Oh, okay, look at that. That is exactly what happened. So that's at least encouraging. Okay, so at least my drawing code is correct. So I'm doing something else stupid. Um, oh, ha 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 ha. Woo -hoo -hoo. 
uh, cell size. Uh, we shouldn't have the plus ones here. We should oh, have yeah. the plus ones here. That should do it. And then here, I actually want to divide these ones by the cell size. So I guess I still here want to, or by rows or whatever. Uh, yeah, I guess I want to have like a cost to float or divided by rows here, just for the, just to get some fun colors. And here, cost to float or C uh, divided by calls. That should make it a bit more interesting. Oh, look at this, you guys. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's great. Looks like Minesweeper. <laughs> Classic Minesweeper. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's do a bit more, uh, a bit better dimension so that it actually starts maybe looking a bit more like a Minesweeper board. So let's maybe do like 50 columns. 30 rows, that seems pretty reasonable. And then let's see what that looks like. Okay, well, this looks like a, an actual grid. Now we just need to, uh, I guess now we just need to uh, write numbers. Uh, yeah, text. Some sort of text. Okay, let's see. OpenGL text. Okay, we have 15 minutes left. I feel like we can do it. We can at least draw the board. Not not get interaction, but at least draw the board. Okay. My, my 15 minutes. Are you done at 10.30? Yeah, I just want to stop at some point. I'm getting a little tired. Uh, okay, how do we draw text? Oh man, text shaders. That's the hard way. See if there's an easy way. Search for like... I'll show you. How to draw that text. The page you found. Oh no, why is this hard? <laughs> oh, you need an atlas. No. Okay. But maybe, is, are you using GLU or something? It's like a library. Glut? Are you using, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know if we can do that easily. Well, maybe uh, you can search in the library that you have. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. Uh, GL, uh, where were we? We had like this GL all. Search for text. Oh, you find texture. <laughs> Uh, texture, 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 texture. Okay, that's not too helpful. Context, okay. Text fragment shader. Okay, that's something built in. But that's it. Okay, I don't know if there's a text thing. Mm. Okay, let's have another draw a number of dots equal to the number that you're trying to render. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing something like that or like coloring it by by number or something. It's render like your text in Morse code. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh... Yeah, I guess we will have to do that, right? It's just uh and I mean, that is easy. That is super easy. So we can do it right now. Uh, so let's just do make it red if there's a bomb there. So let's start with that. So if we have, uh, okay, let's say value is um, row times uh, columns plus the column, or like that's the index really. Uh, well, we don't care about the index, we only care about the value, so we get like board or data of that thing. 
if value is minus one, then we want to do this with uh, the red color, which is one, zero, zero. Otherwise, we can color it, let's say, blue. But a shade of blue that corresponds to the value. So we're going to cast the value to a float first. Um, and then divide it by 8, which is the ma maximum. And then we should get a nice little shade. Uh, and the rest will be black, essentially. So we'll get like some dark patches. We can also invert it. I don't know what will look better. It might be. It might look better inverted. Uh, but let's just see. <laughs> look at this, you guys. This is exactly right. We have uh, we have bombs, and they have like the numbers one around them. We just nice. need. We just need some more bombs, so we actually get a, a bit more interesting data like, here. Like Adjacent-ish. Yeah, exactly. So let's see, how many bombs do we have in total? A hundred and like, a, how many cells do we have in total? Uh, and it, I think it's 1500. Um, no, 100, uh, yeah, 1500. So if that's, if that's sort of our maximum, then what's a good amount? Well, maybe, I don't know, like 300 or something. Sign off. See you later. Hey, check yeah. this out. It's uh, this looks this looks really good. I think I'm going to stop to stop here as well. <laughs> nice. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. I think I could play with this if we yeah. would uh, implement like the mouse and mouse and trackers and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think, nice. I think that's a pretty good. I think that's a pretty good result for today. Yeah, pretty good place to stop. Yeah. We did some Yo, unit I was, tests. I was thinking of uh, wrapping up my um, data source panel uh -huh. um, tomorrow since I just submitted a big PR for review and can't do a whole lot more until it gets reviewed and or merged. Oh. Um, do you want to care on that a bit tomorrow, maybe? Do, do, you, busy? do I want to what? Care on that a bit tomorrow. Uh, we can do it on Friday. I'm taking tomorrow off. Ah, okay. I might, cool. I might play a bit more with Jai tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, the thing I was thinking of building in Jai is is kind of like a Jai formatter. Oh. Um, because you get the the AST with quite a bit of information. Yeah. Um, but the current print program routine uh, doesn't really try to do any formatting and just uh, it's just kind of like a demo thing i think yeah. maybe yeah. or just educational or something uh, so that seemed like a, a nice like bigger bigger project to do in jai yeah um and like can it be sized projects? yeah uh yeah but this is like this is pretty good i feel like i learned a lot how, yeah, how do you feel? How, what, what do you think about the language, kind of like seeing seeing it and f getting a feel for it with a very simple program like this? I think it's okay. I think the memory management has gone like too manual. Like there's mm -hmm. no unique pointer or shared pointer or anything like that. Um, I suspect that's going to be pretty error prone yeah, uh, once possible. you get beyond like toy program sized. Right. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I don't know. I think I think the other thing that can really mitigate that is like the concept of like allocators uh, being something that you can sort of like play with and just at the you know in our case we have like a render loop and if we want yeah. to do any sort of like allocations in this render loop we can just have like an arena allocator and just clear it out at the end of the render loop. Yeah, unless unless your memory lives between iterations. Right, right, but you know if. If you have any sort of like state that you want to keep, uh, that you want to keep between renders, you have to be kind of like careful about that stuff already anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, it certainly solves some of the problems with C++, but um, 
I think it reintroduces some as well. Like memory management is mostly solved in C++ without right. garbage collection. Right. And it's pretty good. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know yet. I guess I'm also just not familiar enough with C++ to really make a good comparison. Right. Um, yeah, you'll have to let me know if uh, if uh, you manage to write your formatter with no leaks. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's a good question, though. I mean, the formatter almost by default won't have any leaks. Like, I, I won't have to deallocate anything because it just exits at the uh, end. Yeah, good short-lived program, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, when you can get away with that, it's pretty nice. Yeah. But I feel like most programs have sort of like that property to a large degree, right? Like, even if I would write like my formatter as a library that runs, you know, uh, at the start of every compilation or something, like again, you can just like allocate, yeah, allocate yeah, something and just, right. yeah, and just like uh, nuke it away at the end and you're done. And I feel like a lot of things have that property. Like if I think yeah. about WebFizz, uh, there's definitely sort of like points where you, yeah, where you can also do that because we also have a render loop basically. Yeah. So I don't know. That feels like I kind of I kind of like the idea of that model. But yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, I think it might be oversimplifying a little bit. Right. Like you've got a great solution for your scratch uh, your scratch buffers. Right. But like if that solves the ninety percent case, like the ten percent case is really important. Right. But if I think about you know uh, the the software that we built in WebFizz, for example, like the ten percent case. We have to be like super explicit and careful about already anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it doesn't feel like too much overhead to, yeah, have to do a sort of like explicit memory management for yeah for those things. Yeah, I think I think this kind of language makes like hard things easy, but makes easy easy things hard, um, which maybe is the right trade off for some things. Right. Yeah. I, I kind of the the way I, I kind of think about it too is like. Uh, it's almost sort of like a functional programming style in in in, in some sense um, meets you know low level programming where sort of like the functional programming style is uh, um, uh, you have to like be very careful about the uh, the memory or, or like the states that you keep around and you want to push that to the edges of your program as much as possible and yeah. like um, be very explicit about it and so on and then everything else. Um, uh, it's sort of ephemeral and sort of like pipeline thing. You don't worry too much about it. And even though, you know, you do tons of mutation here and so on, uh, like it's, it's a similar style because you, yeah, you push, you push the, that state to the boundary and everything else is kind of a scratch pad thing you just throw away. All right. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm very curious to see how it actually works in practice. At least this, this little example wasn't too bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Although we did have to do like a little bit of, like, I think this, this A year, lot of manual GL stuff then. Well, I mean the, the GL stuff, of course, but that's, yeah, just GL. At some point there will be libraries. Yeah, exactly. Language is successful. Exactly. All right. I'm going to sign off. What's that? Uh, I just said see you later. Yeah. See ya. Uh, that, was, that was fun. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, that was super fun. Thanks for thanks for watching that with me and kind of like giving giving suggestions along the way. Yeah. All right. All see right. ya.